Okie doke. Thanks for waiting. Thanks for requesting me. I am Velvet and I'll be your hostess today. We are about to go, I think, hold on. Venus? Venus is here. Oh, thanks all I do. <laughs> We're about to go and see our potential suspect. I personally don't think she did it because like she, she doesn't really have a reason to. But we're about to change the trajectory of the game, I guess, because it gave me a warning. <laughs> a concrete pipe buried in sand and dust. Also, sorry I was late. Um, I was messing with tits and also my computer decided to be a little slow too. So, you know. <laughs> What the hell? Hi, Raven Moon. Nuzzle, nuzzle, nuzzle. It's like a thousand radio stations are being blasted into your head all at once. But her words are the only ones you can make out. I know you're feeling pretty uncomfortable right now. Don't move too much or fight it. That'll just make it worse. Says the shadowy figure by the machine. Can't say it's a pleasure, officer. I was really hoping not to make your appointments. But here we are. She says the word officer. You feel a spike in the agony. It sounds like the entire radio is rage is screaming directly into your new arms. Cover your ears. You feel something in your chest, an unnatural pressure. It's spreading to your left arm, your jaw. So I'm guessing this is bad. Try to remain conscious. You feel is pain and weakness. You have to surrender now. We all do. It gets so dark. You don't even see her face. Like you always thought you would. I think I might have died. Cop suffers final heart attack. Damn. Damn. It sucks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, she killed me. Damn. Damn, girl, you're a murderer for real now. Okay, let's see. Endurance, come here, you. Took two points in there. <laughs> okay. Now, hopefully, I won't die. Yeah, not beating the murder allegations. I, I still think she didn't do it, but you know. Yeah, yeah. Are you gonna kill me too? No, I'm not going to fucking kill you. If that had been my plan, he'd be dead already. All things considered, I'm being pretty reasonable here. I'm using a pale latitude compressor. You and your partner have been caught in its field. Grid on the pale, literally crunch the distance across it. 
Signals are relayed across a series of repeater stations fixed to buoys. Not a fun job manning those stations. All alone out there in the pale, people lose their minds in just a few years. So, what we are experiencing is a concentration of radio waves. He gestures towards something with great effort. Precisely. This is an industrial strength for Adelaide. It's meant for forcing dimensions on something that doesn't have them. Needless to say, the frequencies used are out of this world. At the upper limit is the large prime number generator station. It's used specifically for pale latitude compression. That's why you may be hearing some numbers. But you might also hear, or think you're hearing, local radio chatter. She likes telling you about the machine. Keep her talking. Look for an opportunity to break loose. What's this goddamn pail anyways? Pale? It's the end of the world. How'd you get your hands on this thing? I built it myself. She nods towards the torture device. That's illegal. I'm guessing it's patented. But we are beyond that, aren't we? Oh yeah. Way beyond. She studies her death ray and the law officers trapped inside it. Will I stay like this forever? No. Once I shut down the compressor, the pain will end. It may take a few minutes for you to study yourself. It's a bit like waking out of a very confusing dream. Have you experienced the compressor yourself? Yeah, I stuck my head in there before using it on you. It seemed like the ethical thing to do. Can't say that I enjoyed it. The field was weaker, but I can imagine what you're going through. This is all great, but let's talk about the man who was killed. Yeah, let's not talk about that shit. You were hunting me and fell into my trap instead. That's all there is to say about it. I got questions, bitch! So she thinks of you as hunters, not the cops. And of herself, merely as prey. Please, could you just turn it down so I can ask you something? If you've got something really important to say, you can do it through the white noise. Lieutenant clutches his head, grimacing. God damn it. She regards you and Kim with sudden sympathy. Fine. If you really want to talk, I can dial it down. I've also got a gun, by the way. She steps reluctantly out of the shadows. The pain lessens. She's carrying a two-barreled front load. Remain careful. Well, it doesn't feel much better, but you can form sentences now. Thinking doesn't seem to hurt as much. There's only three meters between you and the machine. If you keep her distracted for long enough, maybe Kim shoot that thing. Be careful when you make your move. That'll be it for questions. Bide your time. Did you shoot Lily? No, I didn't do it. I only helped stage the lynching, though I doubt that makes much of a difference to you. Who ratted me out, by the way? Was it Titus? No, he wouldn't have broken first. It was your girlfriend she cracked. Nah, she didn't crack. She's a survivor. If she told you anything, it was to save herself. But she couldn't have known I was on the coast. How did you find me? Titus told me it took some convincing. Oh, fuck. Took some convincing my ass. Those guys liked me, I know it. This is what happens to people who people like. A dull despair is creeping into her voice. How the fuck did the rest of you get by? Wait, wasn't it you who called me the human can opener? It's not personal, I opened them up. I did, didn't I? Now you've come for me. Fuck them all the same. That did make her forgive them. A little. I do it by asking questions. I have some for you. Like what? I already told you I didn't do it. A strong moral compass. She still wants the opportunity to make a case for herself. Would you say that Lily was a likable person? I didn't like him. Hardened mercenaries aren't particularly likable types. Did you feel protective of the Union? Yeah, sure. And I didn't like wild pines sending in those foreign firemen. Me and a 
fuck ton of other people around here. She didn't hate it, okay? Don't you feel sympathy for Mercs? It's hard work. Plenty of broken people who don't come with that kind of body count. Besides, they're paid well for what they do. I have other questions. I'm listening. Do you have an alibi for when Lele was shot? Man, I was with the boys the whole night. I hope they at least bothered to impress that upon you. There were ten minutes they couldn't account for. You mean the length of a toilet break? That wouldn't even have been enough time. Hold on, no one takes a 15 minute leak. Look, fuck you, man. I might also have stopped by the bar. She speak of truth. Our investigation, Wids from the Pain, has shown that 15 minutes was just enough time to commit the murder. Wow. Ads should be I'm starting up it. soon. Please, explain. Play pinball much? No. Not since I was 14 and hanging out in the only diner in Dardan. Haven't been in the low risk, no reward games. Why? There are some mysterious pinball machines and some pretty mysterious rooms in the whirling. Yeah, and probably some ghosts from the time of the suzerain. I'm not really interested in supernatural mysteries. What about elevators? You like elevators? The fuck do elevators have to do with it? Do you or don't you? Not particularly. Not even quaint old rickety ones? I'm not really into old shit for old shit's sake. God damn it! Look, there's a secret way from the ground floor of the whirling to the roof. I don't know it, but also... She's found studying your face. The shot couldn't have come from the roof. Or we would have all heard it downstairs. She has a point there. No one mentioned... The pain stops him from finishing the sentence. That didn't go super well. You've got to lay something. You have a gun. And? Where'd you get it? The gun store. What gun store? Trigger Happy Jacks. That doesn't sound like the name of a real store. What did you think? That I'm going to squeal on my gun supplier? Sorry, I'm not that kind of gal. She is. Let's see. I see it's a front loader. Do you have another gun somewhere? Sure don't. The breach loader? No. I can't tell. Quite tell what kind of gun is it? A Nakway 80 front loader, two barrels. Not really what you were looking for, I'm guessing. There's other evidence I want to ask you about. Yeah, evidence. Do you like to hang out on rooftops? Who doesn't? Oh, you probably mean Fazja's rooftop. Sure, I've hung out there. She's got this great antenna. What's so great about her antenna? It's very powerful. I used it to tune into RCM frequencies. That's how I knew to be prepared for your arrival. Is that the only reason you hung out on the roof? The view's pretty bomb, too. But you might say the antenna was the main attraction there, you know, along with Faja. So you're sure you didn't shoot the Merc from the roof? Yes, I'm sure. And anyway, as I said before, the shot had to have come from afar. Okay, let's take a step back. Yeah? Where? More. More questions before doing anything. Meh. Yes. Get it, Harry. Get it. The lies broken on its side. It's quiet in your head again. It still hurts like hell, but... You okay, Kim? <sighs> All good, officer. Be careful. She looks at the machine, assessing the damage. Her hand trembles. Oh, fuck it. She puts the barrel of the gun into her mouth! Whoa! What are you doing? Problem. Ma'am, put the gun down. That's not the solution to your problem. You are... Oh, yes it is. Oh boy. Oh boy. I can't save my game. Oh no. Oh boy. 
Yeah, he was moving really fucking slow. He was, like, slow motion walking towards the thing. She could have just, like, pushed us over or some shit. I don't know. Like, she could have shot at our foot or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. <sighs> Rhetoric. Okay. She's <sighs> What options? You know. Please, just walk away. She stares at you, frozen, the gun still in her mouth, eyes filled with dark intensity. Then something shifts in her. Gratitude, doubt. She's still ready to go. Just fucking go, okay, before I change my mind. She runs past you, then past the lieutenant and disappears into the darkness of the tunnel. Good God. I did my best. I would have done the same. Had I not been incapacitated. He could have taken it like you. It irks him. Then he gets over it. I think she didn't do it. Her tent. We should check it out. He points to the back of the cavern. Dark water trails into the distance. There is no way out. Cooking utensils. She prepared herself porridge with bananas. Eight dollars, baby. The plain red tent stands by dispassionately. The Look tent inside. looks old, but well maintained. In the darkness of the tent, a rolled up sleeping bag. Cooking utensils some books and a kerosene lamp it reeks of cigarettes look at the books assorted soft covers mostly pulp horror a motor character lies buried in the snow on one cover on another a ghost airship you also see a collection of radio enthusiast magazines see anything sift through the magazines Rega monthly journal of material science more technological digest one of the magazines doesn't have images on the cover. It's not a magazine. It's a leather notebook. A notebook? Take it. You pocket the worn brown leather journal. A trusted friend left behind. We should read this immediately. Like, right now. A well-loved journal with a brown leather cover in the brand Schnellner embossed on the back. It seems to have served as a loyal friend to a lonely traveler. A thick journal. The cover is worn like someone used to carry it around in their back pocket. Examine the cover. It's made of full grain leather. The lower left corner of the back cover sports an embossed brand name. Schneller. Schneller. What did I call it? Schnellner? <laughs> This was important to her, when it was still hers. Unwind the strap. The journal falls open. About two-thirds of its ruled pages have been filled. Study the handwriting. The large cursive of someone who writes quickly and confidently. Flip through the pages. It's a mix of logistical notes, diagrams, and personal reflections, all dated. It's good she left in a hurry. We could learn a lot from this. What kind of logistics? Hard to tell exactly. It's mostly noted down in code. Looks like contact information, quantities, directions. There could be useful information about local operations in those notes. We have a general sergeant at my station who's good at this point. I can give this to her after we finish this. What are the diagrams of? Esoteric radio technology. The most recent ones probably pertain to the latitude compressor, sketches, calculations of distance and density. You make out a familiar spiral shape. Anything personal? Short, wry observations of people and places. Probably a way to pass the time on the road. Also, what appears to be attempts to sort through some difficult decisions. There are a few passages with many questions in there. Staff issues. Always tough on the leadership. You smell traces of betrayal. How far back do the entries go? The first entry 
is from August 2nd of last year. It reads simply, I know my position is precarious. All I can do is make myself as useful as I can while looking for a way out. Remember, no one is indispensable. What did she write the day Lily died? Nothing on March 4th. March 5th, though. Well, that's bound to come back and bite me in the ass. I'm bad at this. Loyal to a fault. Except, but that's another matter entirely. You have no idea what she means. These are personal notes. Don't expect to understand all of it. What's the most recent entry? The most recent entry is from today. It reads, even when I leave here, if I leave here alive, what's my next move? Staging a lynching is a crime, even if I'm not accused of murder on top of that. Forever on the run, not really my idea of the open road. Man, I was really looking forward to winning. Winning what? I just don't think she killed a mercenary. It's mostly a gut feeling, though, since we let her walk off without healing her side of the story. Sorry, I didn't know she'd try to kill herself. That would be a first, or a fourth, but who's counting, he thinks. Very rarely does anyone actually get free. If she didn't do it, then maybe it's a good thing we didn't catch her. I wouldn't go so far as to say that. We have other reasons to arrest her. Hi, Moxie. <laughs> Besides, I'm not sure her life as a fugitive is going to be much better than we did. Then who do you think killed the Merc? Could have been Titus. And again... But no one heard the shot. Maybe there's a hardy boy we get to meet who acted as his accomplice. Either way, we need to keep an eye on him. One thing is for certain. We have business back in Whirling and Rise. Questions to ask. We should get to it. All right. Woo, that was intense. I should have asked more questions. I didn't think she was gonna like, I don't know, fucking try to kill herself and then run away. <laughs> I'm doing all right. We just had an intense standoff, but uh, now we're gonna go back to our little place, our little motel. This collapse nearly sealed the basement. One can barely squeeze by. to the whirling in rags. I wonder where she ran off to. I wonder where she like is gonna go. I wonder if we're gonna see her again. I mean, probably not, because she knows that, like, she's gonna be under arrest for staging a lynching, but. Stop. Just up ahead. Danger. What you have isn't enough. You need more firepower. Huh? Your Kavalza KR2 multi tool looks impressive, shining in the cold spring light. But what can it do against military? I'm not sure. I feel ready for what lies ahead. Then you'd better get ready. Whatever happens, put your back. Uh, okay. I'll save my game. I'm all out of shit to give, Loincloth. Welcome to the fucking reckoning. Who the fuck are you? Who are- what's going on? Oh shit, there's military dudes. Uh, we kind of made a disco. We made a nightclub. <laughs> Put your damn gun down. People are gonna get hurt. We need to talk this through. All right?
right. He's being reasonable. This is the scab leader. His chest rises and falls under the ceramic breastplate. His fingers reach for the butt of his sidearm. There's something very wrong with him. He's dangerous. Shh. Lieutenant raises his left hand. This is a misunderstanding. Nothing irreversible has happened yet. You can just return to your unit and forget all about this. The kit is merciful. Willing to spare us. If we just forget about our murdered and humiliated commander, I think we should just kill everyone, Corti. You are all drunk. Come to your senses. You won't gun down seven people in the middle of the streets. This isn't a frontier town or a jungle outpost. Easy, Percy. Let me in. I know guys like you. I'm sure we can come to a peaceful agreement. Ain't that right, fellas? He is facing overwhelmingly superior firepower. And he's small. It sounds like the armored figure is weeping. Nest in your abdominal cavity like a little wild mouse. The masked man's words are barely intelligible. But you can hear them. Fuck. There are three of them. I was hoping it would be less. Lieutenant points to the helmeted figure. The lieutenant is genuinely worried for his life. You should consult him before getting in there. What do we do? My plan is not to get killed, but we have to intervene. The big one is the damn scab leader. If this turns into a firefight, we should take him out first. Okay, stop. This is the police. Get lost. Dude, I've only been here for four days. Do you know how long it takes for crimes to get solved? I will hydrate, thank you. Crimes take like fucking forever to get solved, dude. Can take years. Anyways. He licks his lips, waving his gun at the crowd, losing his balance for a moment, then he staggers backwards. I think he's calm. It's the only word you can make out for him. It doesn't sound calm. Easy now. No one needs to die here today. Oh, people are gonna die today. We're not leaving it like this. These tribals hung him up for everyone to see. <laughs> yeah, only one to three episodes. <laughs> Shit, we're in episode four. We better wrap it up. <laughs> I hear that um, people take a really long time to beat this game. Like... They'll be like on like a like a week or something or something, but like it took some people like until day three to get the body down. I got the body down on day one because like that was like all I wanted to do. I'm like I want that body down from the fucking tree, and I don't. We're gonna get the body down no matter what. Like that was my big goal. So. No one is going to kill anyone. Let's just put the guns down and talk like civilized human beings. With a wordless gurgle. Killer loads his long rifle. The leader gives a small nod to the helmeted man. You feel your fist contract as you stand there between these men, all carrying real weapons. Kim, you have a gun, don't you? No, it's okay. Soften him up and trust the others to attack if it comes to that. Make him talk. Present an argument. Peace. Always peace. It has worked thus far. Start with the first idea you have. Move down from there. Please. Oh, somebody printing something. Somebody's printing something. Here it comes. It's... A cherry cream cheese coffee cake recipe. That sounds great. I'm looking forward to it. Shit, that sounds awesome. 
I knew you weren't a goddamn scab leader. Yeah. I don't fucking act so well. Lately had a hard on for making faces with the natives. Fucking shit. That shit is done now. True Who are you? Sergeant Major Raoul Cortina. Reporting in to burn this fucking mug up to the ground. What the whirling in rags do? <laughs> As he moves, the interlocking pieces of his armor click softly. Click, click, click. A realization comes to you, like a picture puzzle coming together. His name is Raoul Cortenar. The dead man's name is Elise Cortenar. He's brothers with the deceased. Oh no! No, probably foster brothers. Elise was put into a foster home, remember? Even so. Killing, maiming, and humiliating our commanding officer. All sentenced to death by lead. Courtner. I knew about that name. I know about that name. He sways from left to right, inspecting you. Raul and Ellis Courtner. Courtner. Look him in the eye. I'm sorry about your brother, Raul. He wasn't my fucking brother. He just grew up on the same farm and got beat into place by the same sick. You were foster brothers, I know that. You don't know shit. That's called Why don't you? He turns to the radio officer on his right. You lost it. Quick. His parents left him in a fucking leaf compactor. Who? Lady. Yes, when he was small, just an infant. We researched him. We contacted the ICP and looked at his birth record. It was in there. Another thing. They fucking put Lady in a leaf compactor. And now the Finish the job. He waves at the gang huddled by the doors. It's a mind fuck, Corti. He wasn't put in a leaf compactor. They're making it up to fuck with us. Major, permission to. Open fire. We can't have that. Interfere now. Listen, your Lely. Everyone says good things about him. He was a talker. Fuck do you mean? Talker. We've heard testimony. People say he was charismatic. Nice guy to be around. Yeah, he likes to chat up the natives, share leaflets, squeeze a bit of kid tears here and there. Great fucking idea that time. He points toward the yard. If Lely was here, he would spare the body. Maybe shoot one for sure. But me, I'm not a big fan of public affairs, Clay Monkey. I'll gun every one of you down for what you did. Ready to open fire, Major. At your command. He had blue eyes, didn't he, your brother? Baby blue, yeah. Like someone fucked up and put a baby's eyes on a grown man. Yep, we can't leave this place unnoticed. <laughs> it was creepy, but bitches, bitches like that shit, I guess. Or, I don't know what bitches like. I just know how to hold down. Oh. Your brother did not deserve to go out like that. I promise I will find his killer. Find his killer. Pop. His killer stands right there. Shitting his pants. And you're standing away. Catching. I know what this tactic is, Silo Sam. You're gonna die with him. Right here. Big talk. But that leaf compactor won't leave his mind anytime soon. It's a small thing, but it got him off center. International Damn. something. International law. Don't say it. Don't say it. But now you stood there scratching your ass for 1.5 seconds. You think this helps them? Shut up, rhetoric. Easy now. Easy. Just tell them these men didn't do it. There's a peaceful way out. Listen, they didn't do it. Yeah. Who did? Wait, I just need a little time to figure it out. Time. You had time to fuck around in that church to run errands for your union chief. I saw you. Time is up. Give me that name. No. It was someone else. Someone else. Someone who's not here right now. He was shot from a great distance. A sniper did it. You think 
time, fucking stupid cop. What? I got your pals here. Right now. Huh? How about the kid? Tell me. That fucking snipe. One more. Is that a slur? Are you calling her a slur? Listen, please. This cop and this drumhead cop marshal won't decide who. <laughs> Your mind Fuck! To a halt. All you can see is the revolver in the man's armored hand, swaying, pointed at her. You move your mouth like a fish gasping for air. No, she wasn't even there. He pulled <gasps> the Elizabeth! From the muzzle. Oh shit! The shot rings in your ears, a low tin ring. Then. I'm okay. I'm okay. Oh. Fuck this. Ah! The man starts pulling something from his pocket. There's a course shuffle against something. Is it a gun? Gee! Chance of Lizzie! Now! He wants you to open fire on the mercenaries before he does. He's waiting for you and your partner to be the shield. You're all drunk, look at yourselves. Yes. So what? Your judgment is impaired, you'll regret this. Nah. I'm clear as day. Fucking government ordained super soldier. Enough already! What is this? We didn't come here to fucking chat! Interrupt me again, and I will execute you on the spot, Lance Corporal. The outburst is accompanied by yellowish saliva around his mouth. The Wild Pines rep does not approve of this. You think I care what that company cunt thinks? <laughs> Wild Pines is not gonna forgive you for massacring a bunch of innocent people. The man stares at you with bloodshot eyes, a bull ready to charge. What if I just call her now? But looking for an opening. What if I just call her now, huh? She's gone, you stupid fuck. Sailed off five minutes ago. She doesn't give a shit about you. As you look to the bay, you see a small green sail on the horizon by the crumbling seaport. Growing smaller. Stay cool! How is she? I'll be okay. I'll be. She puts her bloody hand on her heart and starts shaking. She'll be gone soon, too. Company bitch is gone. Man is gone. Fuck, are we still doing in this shithole? He looks around, tired suddenly, sad even. Guys, I um, uh, I could get in the way. I don't even have a gun. Shanky, you little chicken shit coward. Hold your ground. Any oh, worry, you coward. We're doing this together. They huddled close in a formation. Still, the rest would stay. Even Where's Class A? Dying here with him. She can explain this. Who the fuck is that? Glacia, the woman upstairs. Where is she? She left! Gart, what the hell are you doing here? What am I doing? My fucking establishment is under fire! <laughs> you know how much windows cost? <laughs> what do you mean she left? She left! Her room's cleaned out! Right before these assholes showed up! We should have arrested her. His eye is still on the armed mercenaries. You can feel how upset he is with himself. Just for a second. Then the fear takes over and he's back in the moment. Hey, Bushman! Your little cunt isn't gonna help you out of this one! Why did I not find my lost gun? Watch that long cough. I can't hear you. Sounds like you got your mouth. Dick. Rude. Shoot. This is it. Tell him anything. Tell him you have more information. God damn it, I did my best. I just need more time to solve the murder. Oh shit. Bye guys. See ya. The porcelain man raises his rifle and takes aim at G. His hands are steady and the long barrel of the rifle sways slowly. Oh boy. Kim, where is Kim? From the corner of your eye, you see the lieutenant raise his pistol and aim it at Rude. 
if Kim dies, we're restarting, okay? Like, that, just saying. He's trying to find a straight line of sight before the rocket can take you out. Blink, think. You stare down the barrel of the gun. You see Rude's mask behind it, his eyes in the slit of the helmet, like a camera lens, focusing on you. Absolute destruction. God, you're so frail. Too frail to think. A decent amount but if it's to save Kim yes they swarm the path and that passes mere millimeters from your side tearing fabric off your feels like the lightest of times stop shooting at me the man tilts his head trying to see through the clearing smoke for the next shot Watch out. To your left. The pool is about to take a shot too. At Kim. Kim! God, please. Lieutenant says quietly, without trembling. He rames his pale face. He's aimed for the ice lock in Rude's helmet. An extremely difficult shot. He has to. The rifleman will fire at you again. Two shots rain at once. <laughs> One from the lieutenant's pistol. And the other from the balls. It's aimed at the lieutenant, but it misses. You hear a scream behind you. Who screamed? Glenn, dying in a puddle of blood behind you. His mangled torso has two gunshot wounds. Blood gushes out of them like red geezers. Geezers. Oh God, watch out. You see two cold eyes looking at you through all the smoke and panic. And a pistol raised, aiming at your chest, point blank. Then, the man squeezes the trigger. Look him in the eye. A look of happiness. His eyes seem unnaturally bright, shining like stars. Something in the fear must distort him somehow. He is evil. And the end. Here it comes. Death. Well, might as well give it a shot. Didn't think so, but you know. Kim? 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 You can't. There is no time. Something inside your pelvis explodes. Your entire lower body is on fire and your legs can't support you. You fall down like a rag doll. The pain is too immense to scream. It pushes the air out of your lungs. Everything goes dark. A distant blur as you recede into it. Listen through the darkness and the pain. The Hardy Boys are yelling. Someone is running, jumping over you. In the background you hear gunfire shattered glass. And then a man in the name. A familiar sound. Kim? It's Titus. <laughs> Titus, no! You hear bullets rip into him. His voice still giving orders grows fainter. A gurgle. He's not gonna make it. Like, yeah, Titus was an asshole to me. And he was an asshole to, like, everybody else. But, like, and, you know, in the end, he gained, like, a respect for you. And I can appreciate him as a character. Okay, touch your lower body. Feels slick and warm with blood. The pain is too strong to know what has happened there. Even clutching to your consciousness takes everything. What parts of me are missing? They get my dick. Most of what's down there. I don't care. Fuck me. You can also feel the bone when the bullet went in. Something very sharp, like broken teeth under your fingers. Try to open your eyes. What do I see? Nothing. A persisting darkness. Kim? Dancing lights of pain. Distant shadows cast by them. Like a hellish play. You're bleeding out. Out of it, a silhouette appears, crouching over you. You hear a familiar voice filled with urgency and fear. Live fast, die old, live from pain, wince from pain. Yes, keep talking. Stay awake, look at me. Lieutenant pushes you down on your wound hard. But you can't. It's so hard. Your eyelids grow heavy, and the sound's ever more distant. And a cold comes over you. The lieutenant too, is somewhere far away, almost gone, when suddenly you sense something behind him. Kim?
Cam! Cam! Someone stands there, raising his pistol at him. The lieutenant does not see it. He's pushing down on your wound with both hands. Scream immediately. He's gonna die. Kim truly trusts me? <gasps> you guys! He trusts me! No, Kim! No, you scream. Behind you, from the bloody lips, your eyes are full of fear. There is no room for hesitation. The lieutenant turns around and fires, his body falling on yours in the course of the motion. You hear a roar of pain, a death scream. The sound disappears like someone pressed stop on the tape. The hulking figure, too, is gone. And so is Kim. And the whole world. Fall into total darkness. This is dead. One more door, baby. One more door. No, let me back into the fight. The fight? There is no fight. The fight is over. Hi, Andrew. A thousand years ago. You have laid here forever. Keep falling deeper. Take the door. He's not taking it. His body is not taking it. Oh, God, no. He's not disintegrating. He's swelling up instead. Of oh, the hours. Hurting. Moaning. And rotting and being disinfected and smelling of drugs and feeling saliva in his mouth. Drifting in painkillers, thrashing in his warm sleep. He can't go, not before the case is solved. Yeah. There is a radio in the distance, a radio of the world, plain sounds. Good morning. Elysium. Soon we'll return to Hours turn to days. Soon we will get up again and go through it again, again. Finally, we know what the infernal engine was outside. The clarion core. The engine of a complete canal. Kim's car. No, it was him. He is the infernal engine. Can't you see? He never stops. He only gets worse. Did I die? Did Kim save me? What's going on? You see the lieutenant's <gasps> Kim! It turns double. Then triple from the pain. And Gart let me back into my room. Kim. To the right, Arabella. Lieutenant says he's in the middle of a flesh, freshly cleaned room with the fan above his head like a halo. His face is covered in bruises. The room, it's clean. Mr. Gart clean. Thank you, Mr. Gart. How long have I been out? Two days. You've been up enough to take the one in the curse and drink water. Ouch. It's not ouch time yet. You just go to the one in the and all that boat. Wait until it wears off. The piss jacket. Kim, you took it off? Yes. The joke wasn't funny anymore. I took it off. We never got the piss jacket. Why did you say- what did you say? Sunrise? Sunrise Parabellum. Sunrise, prepare for war. It's an old revolutionary thing. Is it war today? The gates of the harbor are boarded up. The streets are a little more empty. Apocalyptic violence is here to erupt. I am relieved to see. He looks out the window. I think we may have ended up for now. Barely. Good. Yes, we have also completely failed. But that's okay. What happened? What happened? We tried to take the diplomatic route and hoped they wouldn't attack first. We did. The Major gave the command. What happened then? As retaliation, the riflemen tried shooting me. He missed all the dodge. 
I dodged. Then I shot and wounded him while Glenn took a bullet in his spine. It was not for me. Glenn did not survive. There's a pause. This is not the first person to die in this place. It goes on. Titus, Fat Angus, and Tio charged. Angus and Tio died before they made it to intensive care. Titus died in the hospital. Oh. Alain and the young musician, I forget his name. They are all that's left. What about the girl? Yes. Nod. Wait, is Titus Titus is dead? Nod. You were bleeding out by then. You warned me. I was able to disarm Cortana before he got to jump on me. Thank you. Although I was not able to kill him, as I should have. Cranel took him. A stray bullet killed the boy, you know. And that's what happened. Titus is dead? Yes. I thought you only smoked one a day. This is the one. And the major? He's in a private hospital across the river. Cranel claimed him from the local butcher shop where Titus died. Don't hurt him. We won't get to him anymore. The good news is he's not coming here either. I did some damage. How many casualties on the Union side total? Five. Glenn, Theo, Angus, the fat one. He took a lot of bullets. And Titus. And Elizabeth too. Elizabeth Beaufort was her name. The gardener. She did not make it? No. She bled out before Evart's surgeon could help her. Evart and his personal doctor girl. For the she was being trained for leadership. If I would have presented the theory better to their leader... She never had a chance. She should not have been there in the first place. There was no way to convince them. And that's... Oh. It's a total shit show, Kim. Yes, officer. Six people are dead. It's not a success. It says seven, but okay. But what's done is done. The violence is called on us. The mercenary tribunal is neutralized. The worst scenario has not materialized yet. And we are still alive. Both of us. Kim, I think they shot my dick off. He did not expect you both to survive once you stepped between those two armies. How bad am I hurt? The reason I did that. You were shot in the left quadriceps. That's your fact. The other side, thankfully. No major artery is running. The bullet was removed, and bacterial infection treated with metformin. Can I walk? We will see. Has anyone from my station been to see me? No. A man and a woman <laughs> sit in the front seat of an armored motor carriage. The woman is driving. The man lights a cigarette. Jean Vitmer is his name. The asphalt vanishes under the wheels of the machine. Ahead, harbor cranes rise to the sky. Back to that shithole, he says. Really? I called your station after the fight. The injury was lovely. They told me they've sent officers to join you on the side. Odd. I haven't seen any. You haven't seen any, have you? I'm sure they are worried about you. That means he hasn't seen them around while you were out. They're not really worried about you. If they were, wouldn't they be here? Better not agitate yourself further. It already hurts. Sorry. If not my station, then who treated me? I did. Thank you. No, no. Are you hurt? Not very. I have a concussion from the Major beating me with the butt of his gun. I try to not move too much. Things would be worse if you didn't warn me. Thank you. I did not see him coming. Stupid of me. Okay, get up. Come on. You can do it. All right, here we go, champ. Lieutenant turns double again. Before your eyes, an orange hue of pain. How are you? My disco days are done. Your disco days should have been done quite a while back, Lieutenant Euphrater. Oh no. <laughs> what happens now, Kim? I honestly don't know. You don't know? We can't talk to Edra. The harbor is enough down. Everyone in there is outside our grasp now. Joyce has left too. We never got to know what she would have told us. I'm sure it was important. The Wild Pines rep representative? Yes, Joyce Messier. On the boat, you know? She could have helped us. It's clear the mercenaries were working for Wild Pines. At least partially. He looks out the window. It's a little late to elicit her support now. 
Ruby's gone. And Klaas here too. We really should have arrested her. You know? Wait, you checked? She's really... God confirmed she left 20 minutes prior to the tribunal showing up. Who did it then, Kim? Who killed the hanged man? I don't know. I think the theory you presented, it's someone else, outside our circle of suspects, was right. It's better be. Everyone within the circle is either dead or gone. Damn. Honestly, I think our investigation has not produced a single critical suspect. The fucking Maybells, Kim. The flowers. What? They were on the roof. I did not catch them. Fucking Butterfingers. Every piece of garbage in the city is not connected to the game. You don't have to catch everything. He's wrong. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about the hole in the ouch wall? Someone was checking her out. I don't know. That's been there for years. The goddamn footprints. Yes. God curse the footprints. Not solving the case by us. Or Diablo. There's still a 28% possibility the shot came from a distance. We should go upstairs, rethink the ballistics in situ. I agree with this. What else? There was that hidden weapons cache under the we building, Revolutionary Era. We could find thousands more if we wanted. And all of Revachol is full of them. But they seem so mysterious. I can't believe they're fucking useless. No need to be melodramatic. You know what I think about solving crimes? He arches his brow. The ceiling fan patiently spins. Solving crimes is hard. It really is very hard. Yeah. He sounds surprisingly weird. You're not ready to give up, are you? No. Are you ready to limp? I'm ready. Good. Where do you want to limp to? Hydrate. Okay, let's see. Dun -dun. Thank you. We should check Clashe's room upstairs. Why not? He extinguishes the cigarette on the sole of his boot. Another look at the window, perhaps? The one he was shot through. I don't know. I can't think of anything better. Oh, hey! Hi, Wonder Witch. We just got shot and almost died. I'm Velvet, and I'll be your hostess today. We're playing Disco Elysium, and man, man, having a hard time. Let me give you a shout out. Look at you, completely broken. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little disappointed. Mommy. Harder. Sorry. Yeah. 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 More pressure, slowly squeezing what's left of your life out of your lungs. Harder. This is the Sorry. end. Sorry. <laughs> Step on me. <laughs> we love evil women. I'm afraid it is. <laughs> I'm okay with this. Everything goes dark. I support women's wrongs. Are we actually gonna limp? Oh shit, we can still run. Hey! <laughs> the Stereo 8 player has been reunited with its right speaker. No. Get back in there. Look, the door is open. You can walk right into Kim's room. Yes! You see gleaming white enamel, no bottles inside. I want to go inside Kim's room. The alarm is set for 6.50 a.m. These papers bear the stamp of the RCM. They appear to be fragments of the lieutenant's paperwork, half finished. You may have notes on this and other recent cases. I had got up in the door to your room. You were running a low bacterial fever. Thank you for keeping this thing alive a little longer. Point to yourself. It would have been easy were it not for my confession. We both got lucky, considering the odds we faced. Let's go. I'm not done inspecting your room, Kim. 
Medicinal supplies on the cupboard. Mercurochrome, a scalpel, antibiotics. Anyways. Oh, look, the window's fixed. New newly replaced glass, shining in the morning light. Damn, I can't believe, like, so many people died. I wonder if less people would have died if, like, I got my gun and stuff. Ouch, that, like, hurts. Maybe if you don't run, it'll be okay. You see the yard below. The corpse is no longer there. The medicine cabinet is empty. Not even a toothbrush. Pity. She really cleaned this out. Mm -hmm. She certainly had a priority straight when she was packing. I mean, I'd assume that less people would die if I had my gun. Because if I could have shot, like, them first or something like that, then I could have prevented more bullets from being... You know? And if I could have gotten my argument right, which was difficult, and I don't really expect that to happen. Like, I don't expect... Like, I'm not gonna restart just for that, because, like, it's, like, a 40% chance. Like, I mean, I did what I could. Um, I would assume that somebody may have died, but... A red thread made of nylon. It leads out of the room and onto the roof. Okay. The red string of fate to the radio tower. The thread is tied to the antenna. Okay. So, who put it there? Why is it here? What's the deal? Oh yeah, I should say raiders. If you need to, like, you know, you leave and stuff. See the shape of a man and a woman writhing. What are those people doing in there? You lean closer to the peephole instinctively. I bet they're doing something quite unnatural there. Sensationally unnatural. <laughs> oh, well, good work today. Good work today. <laughs> um, go ahead, get some rest and all that, you know. Have some food. <laughs> see you next time. I think I can see in the Clasier's bedroom from here. You can barely see through. Better not to jump to sensationalist conclusions. The footprints on the floor, however, definitely suspicious. Thank you. Thanks for the raid again. See you next time. Boring footprints. I want to jump to sensationalist conclusions. Kim, he's vibrating. Look at him go. Go, Kim, go! <laughs> Alright. He's, <j> <laughs> He's just so excited! Hey, Gart, you here? Sorry about all your windows, man. <laughs> hey, Gart. How are you? Oh, you're up. It's good to see you back on your feet. Did you like your room? I cleaned it for you. I did, thank you. Big improvement. You're welcome. I thought it would be nice for you to wake up in a clean place after you, let's be fair, defended this establishment and its clientele from gunfire. Defended maybe putting it a bit generously, though. I had a great view of you doing nothing to stop those psychopaths. What? <laughs> I was busting my ass out there! I wish you a quick recovery. Also, you and your partner are staying here free. This establishment supports cops. The stay is free, whether drinks or not. Just felt I need to specify that. Where did everyone go? Oh, you know, people don't tend to stick around after shootouts. Turns out they're not good for business. <laughs> Vibrating Kim! Vibrating Kim! <laughs> Are Lena and Morel still in town? Ah, them. Nice people, but no. Lena
Nina said they were going back to Jamrock. I saw them pass by outside. This was before the fight started. Aw, I'm never gonna find the Insulindian fucking cryptid. I'm glad she got out of here before all that. Bullets flying and stuff. People inside were quite terrified, you know. But we weren't done looking. Step outside too. But we weren't done looking for done looking for the phasmid. I mean, you're a detective. Perhaps you can track them down. Shouldn't be that hard. Exactly. But only in due time. Crypto business is not a priority right Kim, now. Kim, I want to find the bug. You'll see her again one day. You know it. Things went like they did for a reason. Okay, so I have to mention when it happened, you were right out there on the balcony. Yeah, I was. Yeah. That's because I'm a badass. Yeah, I guess you are a badass. Yeah, I don't know. Clients were panicking. And also, I guess I sort of found out that I didn't give a shit about that. Gart, you have depression. He means it. It's not just boasting. It's something he discovered about himself. Stepping onto that balcony. Oh, I can't feed him. Alright, thanks. No problem. They'll come back. They always. Goodbye. Thank you, Gart. Sorry for being a problem stupid like child. Hey man, what did you think? You're here. He, there he is again, the smoker on the balcony, right here in the whirling in rags. I see you found yourself a little something from my wardrobe. Not bad. Not bad at all. What brings you here? I met your Sunday friend. You did. And how did you like him? You were right. He was magical. Magically bureaucratic. I told you, he can be very useful. I guess that's the charm of powerful people. Who is he? A visitor from the first world. He's not like you and me, Gendarme. He can always return. Return where? To his opportunities in Occident, Sir Leclerc. Still, his coming and going brings some life to the village. Or is it just money? I don't know. He starts at the bar. What are you two? You, you two. Friends, I told you. Sunday friends. Friends who like to get together from time to time. What does it mean, a Sunday friend? That he won't be there when times get tough, I guess. Is that even a friend? It is. On Sundays. Why is he staying at your place in the middle of the night? He has keys. And he likes the view. Is he in? I don't want to talk about other people. I want to talk about you. Mm -hmm. What about me, Shanda? What are you doing here? No, tell me. Yeah, what are you doing here? Admiring the atmosphere. What about you, officer? I live here. My room is right upstairs. Convenient. But what are you doing here? Talking to me. Tell me again about the muscular type who came to investigate the crime. Oh yes, let's see. He knocked on my door a few days after the lynching. I think he was going through the entire building, asking questions. What'd you tell him? Nothing. That I didn't see anything. And he believed you? Why shouldn't he? Did you tell him about your friend? What friend? Your Sunday friend, the witness. No. I don't think it came up. What did he look like? Muscular. Handsome. Strong. Like one of those military types. Was he alone? Yes, but he was speaking to someone on his earpiece. His earpiece? Yes, you know those tiny speaker microphones that fancy security guards sometimes wear. What was he saying? Just reporting back whatever I was telling him. Besides muscular, did he have any other identifying traits? Oh, uh, let me think. He had an accent. He sounded like one of those mercenaries. He sounded vaguely Ornese. No, not vaguely, scratch that. He sounded definitely Ornese. Thanks for the information. Sure. Anything else on your mind? About this robe I'm wearing. You can keep it. I don't mind. I can appreciate beauty when I see it. Thanks. It's like carrying a piece of you with me at all times. Is it now? <laughs> well, enjoy it. Goodbye. Goodbye, Gendarme. Goodbye. Hey, guys. You doing okay? Hey. See, you approach. The bruised man clenches his fists. Oh, it's you. Didn't think we'd see you walking anytime soon. Elaine, look. It's the cowardly cow. What? 
I got my ass kicked out there. Fuck you. Huh? What? He looks up, his eyes full of confusion, as if he'd just woken up from a deep sleep. He's very, very drunk. Our condolences for your left. Is he okay? Point to Elaine. Does he look like he's okay? No. He does not. His unshaven face is almost grey, and he reeks of piss, sweat, and booze. How badly was he hurt? He wasn't. That's the thing. Titus, Theo, Dennis, Angie, they're all gone. And he got away without a scratch. I, I just... there's nothing left. Nothing. This is a broken man. He probably feels that he should have been able to protect the others somehow. And now he feels guilty for not dying with them, or instead of them. What are you suggesting, Kim? I'm not suggesting much. All I'm saying is, he lost everything. This is terrible. I don't think I could go on living after this. The eyes looking back to you from the narrow face momentarily light up, and his lips move without sound. He said, thank you. That shit ain't helping anyone, asshole. The fuck you want with us anyway? What's going to happen to the Hardy Boys now that Titus is dead? The, 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 Titus is fucking dead. What's going to happen to the Hardy Boys? Look around you, man. This shit is done. There are no more Hardy Boys. Yeah, are you two just going to go back to hauling containers in the harbor? No, man. I don't know. I guess the Union will still be policing the neighborhood, but who's going to do it now? You, Eugene. Me? No, man. I'm not a leader. You know, Titus only recruited me because I played the guitar. Said the team could use the morale boost. If any of them had leadership capacity beside Titus, it's him. Keep encouraging him. You can do it. Eugene, boys, has quite the ring, doesn't it? What? Fuck no. If I'd stay, we'd keep the name to honor Titus. You're right. Eugene Hardy doesn't sound as bad either. Man, you have no idea how this works, do you? But yes, if I don't stick around, then it's all over. So I guess I sort of have to now. Yeah, man. You know? You know. You got this. You got this. Thanks for lurking, Lolly. I haven't got shit, pal. What happened to Classe? Damn song of misery, that one. The man shakes his head. And do you have any information on the songbird of misery? God said she took off some time before the firefight. That's all. Trying to remember if there was anything. Oh yeah. He said she seemed to be in a real hurry. Take care, guys. Yeah, you too. It's a rough world out there. It's not easy being a cop. We were too hard on you. Thanks. Both of you. We shouldn't have fucked with you like we did. You got between us and a lot of bullets in that fight. Matinee's owes you one. That's kind of you to say. Take care of your friend, okay? I will. You take care of yours. He nods to you. A sharp pain shoots up your side and into your stomach. You must not be too good. Luckily, it passes. Man, what about Shanky? Is he kicked out of the- Uh... <laughs> oh. Is he kicked out of the Hardy Boys because, uh, because he ran? I can't speak French. The jo the day- The graffito has been painted over the traces of the fight that took place here. It smells of blood and heavy fuel oil. This was Cindy the Skull. Looks like Cindy the Skull finally found the words for her masterpiece. The lieutenant crouches, touching the fuel oil with his finger. Looks like it. Yes. I smell this heavy fuel. Fresh. It wasn't here yesterday. I smell heavy fuel oil. And blood. Some of it is even yours. Heavy fuel oil. Isn't that flammable? What are you trying to imply, Fingers? 
You could buy some smokes, light up a ciggy and throw it in there. You know, just to see what happens. See if it's flammable. It's better that way. Safer. I took French for like three years, but, you know, it has all left my mind. Hey, Kuno, what did you think of the, uh, the firefight? Did you like that? Who's saying that? People, they say you'd kind of died for a moment, that you let your shit out already, but then came back. So I guess that's what's cool now. Just don't think because you got half your dick shot off and you're an invalid now. Kuno's gonna treat you different. Kuno doesn't reward weakness. It's business as usual with Kuno. Kuno's cold like that. What's going on? Damn. He's an ungovernable. Like you don't have enough on your plate. You feel a sudden surge of self pity coming on. Fuck! Kuno! He's off the. He'd rather die than work with the just. Dangerous world out there. Kuno's got his eyes on you. What's that supposed to mean? Who knows? Alright. Now what? Hey girl, you good? Every snowflake is like a little gift in the sky. What the fuck do I do now? <laughs> Got my dick shot off. Uh... I guess we could call about that code. Inside, you see a set of steering levers. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Precinct 57, we've been attacked. I repeat, Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi and... Something is wrong. Only static hisses through the speaker. Hello? No reply. Only the mindless drone of static crawling through the air. He's been this way for a while now. My guess is the Union is listening in on our conversations and jamming multiple communications to protect themselves from Kremlin. It only happens when someone mentions the attack. The rest is ineffective. Our best bet is to carry on like nothing happened. That is, if we don't want to ask about the group completely. Isn't that dangerous? No more dangerous than stepping between three armed mercenaries and 18 young men. Uh, I don't like it either, but that's the way it is. The street seems safe enough to me. If anything, Taking all the mercs makes things calmer. For now. He flicks off the radio. Silence. You can try calling again. Just don't mention the tribunal. And remember, they are listening. Everything sounds mm -hmm. okay. No drumbeat of total war yet. If anything, everything sounds too okay. In the cabin, you see a set of steering. Okay, well... I know that we can't go see Everart, but I just want to check out the Union area, see what people are doing. Are they still, like, out here? No, everybody's gone. Manana, you still there? Hey! Hey, man. You, what's up? The boy there stares at you with respect, then gestures towards the trickles of blood adorning your clothes. Yeah, I got shot. No big deal. Yet you leave. It falls back to an older era where this was commonplace. You have a true boyadero heart. Right, so where is everyone? Hiding, gathering themselves. The harbor's in full lockdown, friend. No getting in or out for the time being. You can't help me get inside? No, man. Not today. Today is war. He says it matter-of-factly, like it's no big deal. What's going to happen next? Time will tell. I'll tell Everett to drop by. I'm sure he'll be glad. What will you be doing now? I'll be okay here, doing lookout. Quite the side, aren't they? Getting to like that rare I am. Don't worry about me. I live to alleviate the worries of our brothers. 
fearfully insane killers turn up. Then I'll run. And live. I'm sure you'll do good. You know it, friend. Good talking to you. No, get the fucking stairs. Thank you. All right. Welcome in the modern Viking. How are you? Is Burgle done streaming? Looks like it. Did we check out all those sniper spots? This was like one of them. I know we did this one in this tower. Hmm. Oh, he left his traps behind. There's nothing else. Maybe we can still find the Phasmid. Who knows? Hydrate? Okay. Did I miss something in Class A's room or something? Or... I don't know. I thought I looked at everything. That's a nice shelf. The guy and his kid are gone. Hmm. Why is walking in this game so fucking hard?
Still thinking about how Kim truly trusts me. I like that. I'm glad. Even though I'm very silly and I like to go look for cryptids and whatever the fuck. <laughs> Kim's like, all right. I'll check again. I mean, the only thing that was different was that red string. Like, and it didn't give me anything to do besides that. Like, it was just like, there's a red string here. Like, okay. And, like, what does it mean? Gentlemen. Oh, I could try talking to Kim. Hi, Kim. Yes. Uh, tell me about the case again. What do you want to know? Hmm. Good. Oh, okay. I'll try that. Bummer. I'm no good at shooter games. Not even Splatoon. Oh shit, I forgot to play Splatoon yesterday. Oh well. Sucks to suck. I try to play Splatoon like once a day and get my like one win a day so I can get my points from my catalog. Alright, Kim. Looks like she left something on the table. Okay, I did miss something. Can I have it? Next to the stack of bills, you see a note. A few lines jotted down in large, uneven handwriting, just as the writer was about to rush out the door. I'm sorry, I fucked everyone over. P.S. I didn't kill him. P.P.S. Gift upstairs. A gift. Kim... Like, the lieutenant looks to the staircase suspiciously, looking at any signs of another presence in the shadows above. Seems she left in a hurry. It's hardly surprising. I like when Kim does a little dance. Girl, was this your gift? The string? Hello. You see the same two neon lit shapes. A man. This is ballistics. She's left a trajectory for us. Ah. The lieutenant tests the thread with his finger. Drawn taut, it rebounds instantly. A ray of backward motion explodes from his mouth to the roof outside, A prime, to then widen into a radius of locations in Martinez, B prime, B double prime, and B triple prime. Where does the thread lead? It suggests the bullet came from the extreme upper quadrant of possible angles, from a point beyond the roof. B triple prime. The island in the bay. Is she trying to tell us a shot came from the islet? Unless she thinks the perpetrator was standing on the ring antenna. It is where the thread seems to point. How did she know how to do this? She was there that night. She would have known precisely where the bullet hole was in the glass. She had a long time to think about it after. Standing on that roof. Staring. It also looks like there may be more to her skill set than we know. The question is, should we trust her? This is her way of saying sorry. I find that hard to believe. But at this point, what difference does it make? This is also a location we have let yet to rule out. So it is. For a second it seems... tired. Maybe we need to go to the island? The wind blows in from the open window. The lieutenant sighs, looking into the cold distance across the water. Kim, let's go to the fucking island. Okay, let's go to the fucking island. <laughs> he takes a second to gather himself, then says, How do we get there? Joyce Miss here had her sloop, but she's gone. Lillian, the net picker, she's tearing her boat. Ah, yes, of course. The village. Let's go. 
Okay. Well, glad we figured that out. through the door. All right. Hey girl, can we borrow your boat? Officer, what happened? You're limping. Why are you limping? You look terrible. You're not limping. You're you. She sounds almost disappointed with you. Reprimanding you for falling and hurting your knee. I think it's time for us to return to the great primordial soup of the ocean. I don't know if you could survive on the ocean. I think you would like sink to the bottom and then the pressure would be too much and your glass would crack. And then you would be part of the soup. Maybe that's what you want though. Do you want to be part of the soup? Hmm? Soup, 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 soup. I'll walk it off, LOL. <laughs> I got shot in the foot. It was pretty badass. You would have liked it. Is this from the shooting in town? We heard gunshots. Not that we don't hear gunshots all the time, but they were closer than usual. There was an exchange of fire on the Rue de saint hilaire It's nothing to be worried about, madame. You didn't only get shot. I dodged the second shot. I can also get not shot. Well, good for you. I'm not gonna say that. I have a question for you. Of course. Can I help you with something? We need to get to that island. Wait, hold on. No, Kim's present makes it awkward. Um, we need to get to that island. That won't be a problem. It's wind still and the tar just dried. We've got two days of relative sunshine ahead. Can we borrow your boat? If you promise to bring it back. And no scraping the hull. We've just got it nice and yellow. And no drinking on the boat. And no joyriding either. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Of course, ma'am. It's only for a day or two. Official police business. Aye. Not along attentively. The crow's feet disappear from the corners of her eyes as she smiles at you. Two days of sunshine? I just got a bacterial infection. Bro, what does that have to do with- <laughs> What are you talking about? I'm sad to hear that. Take care of that with ether, will you? Don't get too many RCM men around here. We had to lose the first one. What's on that island? N okay, nothing, just ruins. Used to be some kind of fortification there before the war. For the, um, Unards. An anti-aircraft gun, I think. Bombed to bits in the landing. I haven't been there myself. Always cl steered clear of it. Hasn't been there herself. Who has been? You said you haven't been there yourself. Who has been then, if not you? My husband used to drink there. Him and his drinking buddies. Always seemed like a bad place to drink to me. People died there during the landing, you know. My mother told me. The kids sometimes go there too. I know they do, on rafts. I tell them not to, but they bring back old bullet casings and such. Which kids? The twins. God forbid they bring the girl along on some rickety barge. Can we maybe ask your twins about that place? Before we go, 
Would that be alright? Be my guest. They've a strange way of talking. See if you can get anything useful out of them. I seldom do. Is there anything I should know about getting there? Well, most of it's sunken. Underwater. That means concrete underwater. Cut your boat if you're not careful. Be sure to enter from the south side. Water's deep there. Thank you. We'll use your skiff to get there then. Please be conservative with the fuel, will you? Just filled her up, but it's a small tank. Be seeing you. It's 1111, make a wish. Hello, children. The scruffy haired little boy kicks the stone while the other watches him do it. Okay, kids, you've been to that island, right? On that island? The one who's busy kicking his stone points to the bay. Yes, that one. I need to know what's there. Don't make a fire, children. Mm -hmm. Gather the sticks for the fire and bullets. Or not real bullets, empty bullets. You guys were putting empty bullets in the fire? That's dangerous, isn't it? Like, what if there's still something in there? Oh my god. What then? They're alive. The fire guy tells the last to put the fire out. The fire guy. The nerve endings sting. They must mean a human being on that island, but it's cut off. Someone lives on the island? No. Yes. <laughs> Let's go with yes. Why is he the fire guy? Because, because... The boy pauses to think. He asks to put the fire out. Why does he ask you to put the fire out? The other one adds laconically, standing with his hands glued to his sides like a little tin soldier. You mentioned something about lights? I... I don't know. It's hard to tell which one now. Did you mean there are electrical lights? He points to the street light. Um, yeah. Is there anything else you can tell me about this guy? Age? Does he live there? No, he doesn't live there. I don't think. No, he lives there. Been there twice, two times. Uh, he doesn't live there. He isn't there sometimes. Anything else? What does this guy look like? I don't know. They say almost in unison. How come? We, we ran. He just yelled. We shouldn't be there. Your father used to go to that island too, didn't he? Okay. Didn't say that. He didn't. His brother punches him. The boy's well eyes well up like he's about to start crying. Your father did not kill himself. I don't know. The boy who made the claim finds himself unsure of it. He looks around. He doesn't even have anything to do with this view. Father is in the fire. Room. Is that all you know? Is there anything more you can tell me about the island? The boy says, rubbing his eyes. It's clear that he has no intention of finishing the sentence. Lights. Fire guy. We should check up on the island. Bye, kids. Take care. All right. Is this the boat? No. The clank, planks creak beneath your weight. A skiff with a small steering engine in the back floats on the calm mirror of the sea. Its two seats are empty. The boat's belly is a shiny yellow color, industrial paint over fresh tone. You see it reflect off the water, along with the factory number, A72. Once you get in, that's it. One pull of the starter handle 
and you're off into the bay. A strange trepidation comes over you. Are you sure you want to go? Have you made all the necessary preparations? Closed all your accounts? Remember what the nitpicker said. It's a small tank. You won't be going back and forth on this. Okay, I'll save my game. Okay. The skiff. Once you get, to, have you made? Remember what? The you take the engine, Kim. I'll hold the boombox. What? What's what? How else are we blast sad FM on our way to the island? Fine. Let's blast sad FM then. Get in and ride to the island. Yeah! Got my boombox. <laughs> He's so stupid. <laughs> Oil. That took forever. The boat comes to a slow stop. The lieutenant turns the engine off. Then there's silence. In the silence, a sputter of wings. A flock of quails takes off in the distance. Let's go. All right. A makeshift bridge, the bombs were powerful enough to break the foundation. The rusted train trails, trails off into the sea. The chain trails off into the ocean, connecting the island to the supply depot on the coast. This leads to the depot in Land's End. Ah, yes, so it seems. What do you think it was used for? For bringing munitions to the island, maybe, and supplies. You could also lock the bay when you raise the chain. 
As a defensive measure, lock it off that side of the bay. Lock it from whom? From enemies. Enemies of the commune of Revachon. This sea fort was a revolutionary fortification, I believe. Oh, seagull. These tires are falling apart. They're at least 50 years old. Attention! Inflammable! No, get, get back over there. Sir? There's a lingling trace of mazut in the air. Some fuel has leaked out of the barrel. Black, viscous. The dry grass crackles under your feet as you stop. Far away birds' wings touch the still surface of the sea. What's that flutter? The flock of quail departs. They are more than a hundred meters away. A hundred and two. A hundred and five. Under the flutter. On the islet, there is almost no wind under the rain quietly falling on the reeds. Bulrushes swaying on the waterline. Long dried leaves chafing against each other. The soft raindrops. Like a silent orchestra tuning at the beginning of some major war. To the west? A silent hiss. Sea air moving through the needles of a pine tree. To the east. The faraway roar of the city. Distant like today's dream. Before it, the sound of sand. The low tide filtered through its grains. A bird turning to its feathers. Raindrops fall on water. Strangely quiet. To the west. circles in the distance. Ahead. A low hum. The air slowly moves through a concrete box, through its ancient slits and cracks, resonating, hollow, a big building. Beyond that, further north. Air flows out of the pillbox window. There is very little there. The air cossets flowers on the meadow. Absolute silence. Reeds motionless. Bulrushes motionless. A drop of rain falls on a black log. Of an extinguished campfire. Below the silence? Call the Mama Dakwa. <gasps> we found her. Kim. Yes? Momentarily, the sounds are swept away. Pain shoots up your right foot and into your groin. Have you noticed how quiet it is? I have. Is that why we're stopping? Hmm. Wait, I have to listen to one more thing. The lieutenant nods in silence. Open your eyes. Stop listening. Well, we found one cryptid. This barrel says ICM. You see a star with little specks on it. No way to get up there. The stairs are gone. Unless we teleported. ICM. This feels familiar somehow. Kim, what is the ICM? Insulindian citizens militia. It's the official name of the communal. The black and white army of the revolution. Sounds an awful lot like. RCM? It sounds like RCM. Rebishal Citizens Militia. It does. Why? The RCM may descend from the ICM. May? It's impossible to say. It was chaos after the war. The name was good for getting people to join us. Rebishal was mostly workers and criminals. Nice political thoughts rush through your neocortex. It's going to be hard to say that. Carrying around all that weight on a busted crutch is making me faint. Whoops. Well, I guess that's fine. What I'm hearing is we descended from the glorious revolutionary army. There were all sorts of groups and whoopie school back then. It doesn't really matter. A white star. Point to the star on the label. No. An upside down star. With its horns in the sky. The symbol of the commune. Are those Spex stars too? No, that's the uninhabited archipelago. A DeLorean era symbol of Kinsalinda, known as the face in the 
the sea. Looks old. What's it still doing here? After 44 years? That's not nearly enough to hide what happened here, Lieutenant Euphrator. One of these barrels was still leaking fuel, as you saw. The city is full of things like this. Old bullets, guns, fuel. Hi, Scrappy, how is your stream? How do I get over there? Man. Well, of course. It's always fun to have a debut stream, so. <laughs> of course! Alright, what do we got in here? Nope. This was once an armament rest. Careful, the stairs have collapsed. Two twin cannons were attached here, medium distance, large caliber. Books, mostly fantastic and historical fiction. Yeah, my first stream had a lot of scuff too. Like, um, I had this headset and the audio quality was really good, but my microphone sounded like crap and it was just, oh, it was bad. <laughs> so I have a new microphone now. I have a new headset too, because that headset actually kind of ends up sucking, but you know. There's a greasy old spring mattress in the corner, resting on piles of soft cover books. White linen and a pillow are visible under a worn out caracal blanket. Someone has been squatting here. The linen is fresh, recently washed. How recently? A flash of pain interrupts you, making you wince instead of letting the words out. You know, officer. You can rest here if you are feeling tired. I will keep watch. You could use some rest for what's ahead. No time to rest now. Yes, any time. If you need a rest later, it's okay by me. Okay. You don't have to be a hero. Will it restore my health? Or will it just pass the time? Dishes stained with sauce and fire. A survivor's kitchen. A moth-bitten bed sheet keeps the wind out. Is that a fucking sniper gun? Books and magazines lie scattered on the floor and on a makeshift cupboard. They are not particularly well organized. Sift through them. Most are soft covers. Serialized fantastique and detective stories from the 20s and 30s. This disparate digest includes the classic Animal Adventures. I understand. I hate, like, sometimes my PC, like, acts up. Like, today it was kind of acting up. And by PC, I mean gaming laptop. I should build a PC. <laughs> um, but I think it acts up because, you know, it's a laptop. But it's it does pretty good. It runs all my stupid little programs, so. Among what is mostly commercial fiction and serialized stories, you find a magazine cathodique for electrical engineering. Then it's back to pulp. Light erotica. An international thriller about circuit vendors. Someone's made themselves a home. Does anything stand out as unusual? Not that you can Damn. Tell. This is a digest of someone who's dead bored. Most of it is for entertainment purposes. Fitting right next to the radiola on the floor. Okay. You do feel there's something you're not getting here, though. Oh well. Hmm. The print in some of the You see candles planted on a broken rangefinder. Okay, it's not a gun. It just kind of looks like a gun. Well, that's good. You were able to fix it. Army surplus winter scarf. Wow, 
Why do we have to go all the way over here? An old cylindrical generator is nested above the ammo lift with makeshift electrical wiring running out of its side and across the floor. The cables disappear into the wall to your right. The lieutenant puts his hand on the metal barrel, checking for warmth. Pretty good. I think we're getting towards the end of the game. It's cold now, but someone has been maintaining it. The wiring has been repaired. Where do these wires lead? Downstairs, somewhere. What kind of generator is this? Liquid carbon. I would imagine it takes mazur. He points to the open fuel cap on the side of the dynamo. The kind that's favored by vagrants and fuel thieves. It's been a long winter, long and cold. If anyone stayed here, they need the generator. It's a little hard because like sometimes like you're not really sure what to do. Like honestly, like I've had to like look up like what to do next because like I've gotten stuck. Um, and like there's a lot of ways to go about things. So like sometimes trying to find out what to do next isn't very simple. Like I remember like I got the body down and I was like, now what? <laughs> like, um, but I just kind of do like stupid little side quests until I figure it out. And you know, there are like checks, like like difficulty checks and stuff which can be kind of like difficult just because like you might not have points in like that area or whatever but you can always save scum i've done some save scumming here <laughs> tap on the side in the hollow ring the canister is empty dust falls from the generator and down into the ammo lift what does this mean a generator here i don't know i'm not a philosopher okay, okay kim that is his idea <laughs> I meant, why is it here? Someone with basic electrical skills has restored it in order to keep the room warm. Maybe it's the fire cat. The wind outside picks up suddenly with a faint howl. Inside, it's warm. Leave. I'm not giving them no fuel. This great blast door must weigh over 10 tons. Rust peels off of it. Oh boy, some money and whatever that is. Magnesium. More magnesium. Is that a sign? Am I about to have like issues with my head? <laughs> How do we open this? Maybe this is one of the doors we don't open. I find us not opening it highly unlikely. Oh, I retract my statement. Let's look around and get it open. What's on the other side? Another part of the island, probably. The lock looks like it could still be usable. This old the lieutenant assists you, holding the canister up to the fuel tank as you tilt. Dark brown, viscous fluid pours out, and the room fills with a chemical smell. There's a red starter switch on the side of the cylinder and a start rope on the other side. The lieutenant flicks the switch. Pull the rope. The recoil start wakes the old generator up. The machine sputters like an old walls before settling down to a wrap. That should do it. All right, that didn't do anything. Is the key in here? Soft covers, serialized. Nope. See old. The offer still stands. Take it. You don't look so good. Maybe just a little shut eye for an hour. Go to sleep. You face the concrete wall. There's less light there in the dark corner. Like a dog, you lie there. Curl up with your knees close to your chest. The blanket feels cold. 
the entire room does. Concrete and cold. Minutes pass. Half an hour, maybe. The sounds of the sea beyond grow distant. Your eyelids close until... Until? You feel yourself standing up in the darkness, right next to the mattress. Slowly, the world begins to hatch from the blackness. It's evening. Sleep. Kim? Kim! The lieutenant is no longer here. Go outside to the beach. Kim, don't leave me all by myself. Uh... The door here is closed. Feels strange somehow. You can't get in. How do I get out of here? Hello. Did I just soft lock the game again? I can't select anything. Let me see. Okay. Sleeping on the island. Bug. Bug after sleeping on island? You were supposed to exit the room. It's not the doors. You can go under a walkway and exit to the lower right. Oh, okay. Why'd it do it like that? <laughs> okay, I got scared for a minute. <laughs> Kim. Kim, where are you? Go down the chain, there's something there. Kim? Don't leave me all by myself, I'm scared. Kim? Dude, Kim, where are you?
fuck him. Walk into the water now. You see her footprints on the water. Huh? What? Wait, what? Further. What the fuck? Dolores Day, the innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state turns around to face you. She has an airship airbag in her hand. She seems to be in a hurry. Good night, Scrappy. See you next time. <laughs> hey. Hey. How are you doing? I'm doing really good, actually. Both professionally and romantically. I've come to a fulfilling and peaceful period in my life. Well, how are you doing, Harry? I'm not doing very well. Don't say that. I know this positive thing sounds stupid to you, Harry. But it works. We all have an obligation to be happy. You too. And you will be. Now. She looks over her shoulder. This is everything I always warned you about. Where are you going? I'm going to Moropa. To live there, in Grad. It's one million kilometers away, Harry. Might as well be another lifetime. What's in the bag? Just my scepter. My globe crucigere. A spare silk gown, a toothbrush, travel documents, the crown of immortality. Crown of immortality? Aren't you already wearing one? Oh, this. She connects the, corrects the wreath on her forehead. This is just a wreath. The crown of immortality is made of rarefied light, manna, and raw palladium. It was passed on to me by the rulers of late antiquity. She looks at the suitcase, not knowing what more to say. Then, over her shoulder, silence, her nuptial gown flows in the wind, wraps around her holy body. Anyway. Your skin is holy and soft. No, Harry. It's just regular skin. I'm not as beautiful as you always thought I was. Let's yeah. not get into it. But yes, let's not. I'm sorry I said that. It's okay. Can you stay for a moment? We need to talk. We need to have one more massive epic showdown. No, Harry. No. I don't want a massive epic showdown. I want to go to the aerodrome. I have tickets for the 1020 flight to Moropa. Really? We don't have anything to talk about anymore. Every combination of words has been played out. The atoms don't form us anymore. Us, our love, our unborn daughters, it's all gone. I have to go to the aerodrome. I have to leave Ravishol and you. And you have to be alone, in hell, forever. Oh. That's just the way it is. Okay. Oh God, whatever you do, don't try to kiss her yet. Not after that. You're still reeling. You'll fall over if you try. But what if I do anyways? I think I failed it. Oh, did I did Your I wait? Feet still oh. from the steps you took, as if over an enormous distance, standing against her. Her body close to you. Rain. With your eyes closed, you move your lips on her mouth. She is not kissing you back. You're not kissing me back. The moment is ending. She is going to move her face away from yours. Oh, sorry, Harry. 
hard not to look at you. When she withdrew and you held onto her hand, she tried not to look at your face and see the expression there. Brother, you should put me in front of a firing squad. I have no words for how I felt. That's it then. No, Harry. Not yet. There is one more thing you have to see. She slides her hands down her chest and onto her lower stomach and smiles. I'm pregnant. Is it mine? Of course not. Oh. <laughs> she looks down at her belly, then up into your old eyes. I terminated yours. Don't you remember? You poor fuck. Poverty-stricken fuck. Oh. Okay. Now, go ahead. Ask me more questions. Let's talk about something else. Don't go. No, don't say it. Don't beg. It will only make her go. Wait, yes, I have other questions first. Where's the list? Yes, somewhere hidden among the options popping up in your nervous system is the right one. That will make her love you again and not go to the aerodrome at all. But that's not a very, very good way for things to be. It's not. But... She looks at her feet. Little golden sandals cover her toes. But what? Tell me there's something good. I don't know why I said but. There is no but. That's it? That's it, yes. We've talked about it a million times. You will get over it. Just like I did. People do. Things will get good for you again. Where in hell? Good for me where? In fucking hell? Oh yes, she'll come around now. I made her love you again. Thanks, Rhetoric. Her innocence, Dolores Day, fiddles with the handle of her evil bag. She has a pain expression on her face. It's agonizing. I don't understand. It was she herself said. We were bad for each other, okay? I was bad for you. Can you not see? I'm bad. I had to stop. I couldn't just turn into a bad person. You will get better. I can't believe my ex-wife is Dolores Day. It just takes some time. For you, I think it will take something like 20 years, maybe? It was hard for me too, you know? I used to think I couldn't live without you. She looks you straight in the eye. Her irises are light blue, flecked with green. But she keeps her shoulders square and her back straight, but it's clear you're still making her sad. Your innocence, Dolores Day. I'm sorry I made you sad. It's okay. Twenty years? That's so much time. Yes. It only took me one year, maybe two. Phew. You, so you felt that way once, You can that you cannot live without me? Yes. It does time is gone now. So very gone. It doesn't have to be like this. Maybe we could try again? No, Harry. We can't. Why? We already tried again, and it didn't work. Is that how it is now? We should just try all good things twice, and then give up. By that logic. What went wrong when we tried again? I can do it better. I don't know. Please. She shuffles from one golden sandaled foot to the other. In the distance, a streetcar screeches. Why? Why can't we be together? Harry, we can't be together because you're insane. Her eyes turn into so sourful ovals. She avoids turning them to you. Insane how? They're turning moist now. Her eyes. She slowly shakes her head and tries to get a hold of herself, brushing her hands in her gown. What happens now? Nothing. I have to go. I'm gonna go now. I was wrong. You don't have power over her anymore. You shouldn't have said that. I am wrong about everything. You should go on without me. Okay, I understand. Nod silently like a matron. No, you don't. You're just being a martyr. Martyr. And I'm really going now. 
Time is up. I must be on the 1020 front. Will we ever see each other again? I won't see you, but you will see me. How can that be? Oh, Harry. This is a dream. Can't you see? I'm already in Morova by now. Who knows how long ago this happened? A year? Two? Five years ago? How will I see you again, then? Right here, tomorrow night. Once this dream starts happening, it keeps happening. Three times a week, at least. And Harry, it really, really looks like it started happening again. There's the video rental. I'm suffocatingly beautiful and young. And I smell of tutti fruity chewing gum. Like I did that time when I asked you for forgiveness. After leaving you the first time, so long ago. But this is intolerably bad. Oh yes, this is real darkness. It's not death, or war, or child molestation. Real darkness has love for a face. The first death is in the heart, Harry. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. You're a prick. How was your sleep? Let's solve the fucking case. Are you sure you're okay? You thrashed around and you bolted up half covered in blood from your wound. Actually, it was total annihilation, Kim. I did not want to wake you. Perhaps I should have? Was it a job dream? No, an ex-wife dream. The lieutenant nods solemnly. I understand. We've all been through similar things. It can be overcome. Swallow the blood and conclude. Let's comb the entire island centimeter by centimeter. That's the next step in the task chain. Okay. He replies simply. He's still worried. You must have really thrashed and squealed in your sleep. Heavy metal door stands as it did. Can't you lockpick it, Kim? Did you go to lockpick in school? Is there actually an exit over here? The hatch is jammed shut. Green paint flicks off the monoblock aluminium cabinet. There are rows of switches on the front panel, a frequency band, and even a keyboard. Run your fingers across the keyboard. The keys rattle like teeth. This keyboard hasn't been functional in decades. What is this then? The console of an antique computation device. The generator upstairs with wires coming out, determine it here. Could this open the blast door? I think, yes. Let's see. That one, the emergency open. Turn, emergency open. The blast door opens with a series of clicks. A shaft of light appears, then widens as the light shines in. Ooh. After you. What's there? Point to the door. I don't know. What if we get into another fight? Don't worry. I have a gun. I don't have a gun. Extra good that I do. <laughs> Let's go. Can I actually go to the beach? Oh. Water rushes below, far down below. A firing slit you can't see inside. 
It must have been a direct hit to take out such a huge chunk. The distant sound of cargo ships. Signal horns echo on the water. Why a, bo a bottle in my hand? Always. Why? Perhaps there's someone there, under the water, waiting for you, where it has always been, smelling of tutti frutti and betrayal. But it's cold. Yes, cold and still. But love is warm by the inside of her mouth. No, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Raise your sight. In the still mirror of the bay, you see Montanais reflected. Tall edifices of ruins reach into the water, like shimmering towers. And the shacks, too. Pine trees and motorloads upside down. Islets and posts, like stepping stones, lead into the water in front of you. Go. Step in. It's been too long. Shake your head. What? What the fuck just happened? Hello? Game. Lord. We will not go through that thought bubble. Man, now we have to watch the door open again. Okay, whatever. I'm gonna go to the beach first. Why is it doing that? Stop doing that. What the fuck? What the hell? Bro. What the fuck? Green paint flicks off the money. The keys rattle. The console of an I think, yes. The blast door opens with a series of clicks. A shaft of light appears, then widens as the light shines in. Man, what the hell?
bro. What the fuck? Okay, well, that's fine. I think I'll end here for tonight. <laughs> Let's see here. We got a lot of people streaming. <laughs> I'm so close. Okay, fine. I wish the game would stop fucking itself. Ugh. Okay, maybe we won't go to the beach. We'll just... Just open the fucking door. Maybe an hour. Green paint flip the key. The concert. I think, yes. The blast door opens with a series of clicks. A shaft of light appears, then widens as the light shines in. Yeah, it's the Switch version. <laughs> No! What the fuck? Maybe. I can't keep getting away with this. I don't know. I simply like to investigate everything. Why? Why me? Oh, I hear Bella, she's coming. Come here, Bella. Perhaps this fixed it. Green paint flicks the console of an empty. I think, yes. Ah! Oops. <laughs> that one. The blast door opens with the okay, get ready to watch the blast door open again, everyone. How exciting. Oh, thank God. Save the game. Save the game. Okay. Okay, I do want to check out the beach just a little bit more, though. Just a little bit more. There's There was, like, that little tower. I want to go check out that little tower. Weathered artillery map showing conditions of the bay in the Bay of Rubbishall. An old medicine cabinet, newly stocked with drawer mine. There's a rain-soaked mattress on a concrete slab. 
only half covered by the crumbling roof. At the head of it, double embrasures, firing slits like two eyes in the wall. B triple prime. This looks like a good place to shoot from. Inspect the mattress. A single person mattress, modern, civilian use. Brand name, Marjorie. There's a fuel stain on the cover, along with cigarette burns. And an empty can of beans on the ground next to it, filled to the brim with cigarette butts. That embrasure, what can you see through it? Inspect the wall. There's a firing slit in the wall in front of you, like a little window. Touch the concrete first. Quite old and grimy, from years without cleaning by anything other than the rain. Look through the hole in the concrete. The springs screech as you lean on the mattress and crane your neck to look out. Trepidation. A tingling feeling in your stomach. A small piece of Martinez coastline opens up in the square in front of you, like a tiny landscape painting. One kilometer across the water. The ruins look familiar. On the left? A towering skyscraper. Its top floors shaved off by artillery fire. Cape site apartments. Rue de Saint Gislain, 33A and 33B. On the right? The red chimney and collapsed back of the four story tenement in front of the whirling in rags. Rue de Saint Gislain, 10. The doomed commercial area. And between the two? The box shaped silhouette of the whirling in rags. Its sloped roof, a tiny fleck of light catches your eye on the rooftop. Sunlight reflecting off the upstairs window of Clausia's room. Motherfucker. What does that mean? Do you have line of sight to your window? More than that. Kim, with a pair of binoculars, I would be able to see inside the room. A pair of binoculars or a scope of a rifle? You'd be prone, lying on a mattress, barrel resting in the embrasure. I think we have it. The origin of the shot. This is the sniper's nest. He pats you on the back. Three small pats in a row. Affirmative. Finally. In our defense, nothing pointed here. Many, many leads pointed as well. You're right. He looks north, over the fortification, then at the mattress. He's conflicted for a second. There's guilt there. It takes him a moment to rationalize it away. Could the shooter still be here? Where? On this island. He does not answer. Just nods. With his back hunched, he looks around once more and says, We should move now. Turn away. Oh, I'm glad I came up to inspect that. I was curious. <laughs> the pain in your pelvis makes you wince, then you continue. Inside the fortress, you make out the console in the blast door. You feel eyes on your back. Someone's watching, but you can't say where. Oh, that's creepy. The distant sound of cargo ships. Okay. Whatever. Back inside we go. Get in there, boys. Come on. Ugh. Apparently the game's kind of janky on other platforms, too, unfortunately. Nice. Water rushes below, far down below. Gonna save again. A rubbery dinghy, it's deflated, broken. Get- Sir? Small white flower blossoms all around you. 
Yo! The fireman! An old man wearing tracksuit trousers leans on the frame stock of his rifle. He gathers a big ball of spit in his mouth, then spits it out into the extinguished fire before him. He raises his black eyes, hooded by creased eyelids to meteors, unclouded by cataracts. His eyesight is sharp. He's practically tearing up from spite. Hatred got the best of him a long time ago. This man hates everything. Are you the fire guy? You walk now. I can't hear you. Did you recently tell two kids to put out their fire? Two twins. I may have. All sorts of little rats have come sniffing around, trying to give up the position. Fire guy. Regressive bourgeoisie henchman. Can't even talk like a grown up. You've retained your eyesight. My eyesight? <clears throat> yes. Helps me see all the shit. Did you close the blast door? I did. And you opened it. How? How did you know I was coming? Reactionary rock and roll music. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I told you we shouldn't play sad FM. But you didn't say that, Kim. I did. We have entered a world where he said you shouldn't. It is the only world. It was not reactionary, it was cool. The fascists were right about rock and roll. It is degenerate. Hip gyrating mental illness music. Wait till this guy hears about penis music. Nice gun you got there. It's not nice. It's a piece of shit. But it gets the job done. Is it a bell in my grave? It's a three angle four forty six. A summer on rifle. How did you get hold of one? It was sent to us by our brothers in the Sinyao Commune. Military. He pats the rifle. The Sinyan Commune? You heard me. It's good now. His gaze turns inward. Sir, I need you to put down that gun so we can talk further. We're, the, we're with the police. The lieutenant pulls his pistol from the Whoa, house. easy, Kim. Easy. You are a glorified night watchman. This is a service rifle. I can only lay it down before an enemy commander of correspondence. I am an enemy commander of rank. Put it down. The words, yes. I am an enemy commander. Stand cold as iron from the mouth. The old man still hugs his gun. And what rank would that be? Don't. Lieutenant W. Freighter. A big wheel of the fourth regiment of the Pederast Army. To hell with it. It's a walking stick, anyway. It's out of bullets. The old man lays the rifle down carelessly, then stares at it, just lying there. He stares on, his wrinkled mouth moving without a sound. A strange sadness, like a song. What did you say? The future teaches you to be alone. The present. The present. The present to be afraid. Cold. The old man pulls back the hood of his plastic cape and looks into the sky. It's blue-gray, the same color as the sea. Those words the future teaches you. Real music. Real Rolyakult. That's La Revachelier, not your rock and roll centipede. Chanson de Soldat of the Black and Whites. You need to address that for Understood. You don't understand anything. The old man squints at you. You see two black beads gleaming. Pick up the gun lying in the sand. His gaze follows your motions. The rifle feels surprisingly light in your hand. Framed, stopped, and patched in places with tape and wire. Inspect it closer. The rifle's in a shabby state. Like a crutch 
that's seen too much trouble. Hieroglyphs are embossed into the forearm, made of walnut. On the butt, you see Vespertine writing, burnt into the wood. Dragon Long, 4.46 millimeter, made in Simiao. This uses jacketed ammunition, 4.46. Jacketed, military grade ammunition. Stable in flight, good for hitting something that's very, very far away. He says mostly to the old man. As he speaks, he stresses every word. He's like in this. It's as he said, it's a triangle made in Sin Huiao. Warren, personal idea. Looks like this weapon has seen a lot of use, hasn't it? No response from the old man. The plastic cape around his shoulders rustles in a small bout of wind. Stow the gun. The old man keeps following your motion with his gaze. His right arm twitches suddenly. This looked very much like the murder weapon. It could be used against them to get a confession in time. Who are you? My name is Joseph Lilianovich Dross. Political Commissar of the 114th Anti-Aircraft Division of the 4th Army of the Commune of Revachol. I am a deserter, a partisan, and a prisoner of war. This is my term of surrender. His eyes turn to the reeds again, dead and dull. The Commune of Revachol? Do you mean DICM? Your holdover from the... From the Insul Indian Citizens Militia, the Army of the Revolution. I was recruited in Chamrock in 07, trained in the Ecole de Control Orion, and consigned to emergency defense duties in 08. I hear the sound of cats. Here, Bella. You're bringing us alone. Come here. Bella. Come here. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I left my unit on the eve of the landing. When I returned here on May 14th, the commune had fallen. Still armed and ideologically trained, I wrote a criticism of myself and resumed partisan duties. How long have you been on this island? 43 years. I've been on other islands, too. I was in a resurrection until they turned it into a spa in 18. Then I was on E-48, a nameless sound, until the sea washed over it. Then I came back here. That was 22 years ago. Again, you've been hiding for here for 43 years? 43 years and ten months. That's steadfast. It's not how a human being should live. But I had to. I couldn't just forget. I couldn't just forget what I saw. What have you been doing during all this time? Hiding, fishing, waiting. He looks across the water. Two police officers step out of the whirling and rags cafeteria. Satellite officer John Vic Mayer inspects giant letters across the plaza mosaic in dark red government marked heavy fuel oil. Patrol officer Judith Minow points west. The fishing village. She glances at her watch. We meet in 15 minutes. It's a 10 minute walk. The officers go, leaving behind the writing. Still smelling of petroleum. One day, it says. I will return to your side. Hmm. Always waiting. The old man turns his eyes from the shore and back to you. For what? For her to return. For who? Girl child revolution. Girl child revolution? Always. I dare not dream anymore. Good. The material base for an uprising has eroded. The working class has betrayed mankind and themselves. 
The historic opportunity for our revolution has passed. It will not come back anymore. However hard I try. Whatever I do. You said you deserted your unit? I was just 16 years old. 15 when I volunteered. I had a lapse of faith. <clears throat> and of courage, too. Lapse of faith? You could say I misunderstood the historic role of the proletariat and thought Mazovian socioeconomics were fallible. For a second, I doubted the irreducible laws of historic materialism. A second is all it took. For what? For reaction to take hold. I'm not going to say it, but yes, we all have a tiny bourgeoisie person inside us trying to run away. And when was this exactly? May the 13th, 08, 44 years ago. The horizon was black with coalition airships. Their petroleum rose to the sky. It looked like, like it formed the clouds. Storm clouds. When they started shelling, it was dark magic. That's enough. Another thing? It's not enough. The total combined power of international capital. All their fear and terror tore into Rivershaw. Streets rose from the ground. Houses turned to ghosts. What is this place? This island? It's not an island. What? It's a defensive fortification of the commune of Rivershaw. And I am its last surviving defender. What was it used for? The congenitally deformed King Philip II built it to restrict access to the Bay of Revachol. We captured it in 02, retrofitted the fort with an AA gun to defend against an airborne landing against the whole world. You mean the landing retaking of Revachol? Coalition military called it Operation Deathblow. I later found out on the radio. They called it Death Row. You are one of them. Tell me, who speaks like that? We had 50 million people on Caillou alone. Coalition military. Iblis. Iblis? The black eyed angel. How have you survived all this time? How does anyone survive? I steal. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, hold on. What do you steal? Supplies, vegetables, collect rainwater. It's the life of a dog, not a human being. <coughs> he coughs once more, then puts his hand on his belly. How is your head, Mr. Dross? I've been throwing up blood since winter. Red, like beetroot. Been passing it in stool to He does seem frail. Good for his age. More like seventy-five than sixty-five. Trouble putting on weight could mean cancer. DRCM can provide medical services. You need to be your daughter. I need to die. No. You don't have medical facilities. You have guns. That's all they give you. Toy guns. You also have jewelry. We also have Dromine and other opioid voice based cane killers. You must be in pain. I have been running out of that stuff. A light goes on in his eyes. He smacks his lips dry. His dry lips. Um, this is a serious situation. You need to be looked over and how we can do it. There's nothing to look over. The triage is in. It's black. Administer morphine. Morrible. How have you coped mentally? I haven't. I have holes in my brain. Years missing. Others filled with pain only. A decade of... His eyes roll into his skull and back. I don't even know what. Inferno? You notice the lieutenant is about to say something. I would imagine it gets tremendously difficult mentally to live in isolation. Traitors. It's better alone. 
I watch the people of this city turn the lights back on more and more each year. Ruins glimmering in the dark like a fucking merry-go-round. It's disgusting. He looks down at his shoes, his face parched from the sun and the wind. There's a wince of pain in there somewhere. Are they not heartbroken? How could they have moved on? How could have you concealed yourself all these years? It was hard in the tanks. I didn't have partisan training. He was searching for stragglers, those bloodhounds. Floodlights on the water at night. There were posters, campaigns. We communards still hoped, and they needed to snuff that hope out. The East capitulated. Martinez and Cold City were turned to dust. But Jamrock, Forberg, even Coron, and Boogie Street, of course. Those fucking kips had Marsoff coursing through their veins. And others, too. Some cordons of Revachol were still fighting. There were cells. I tried to contact them. Soon they all went silent. The frequency dead. How did you get between here and the mainland? At night. I used a dinghy. I only went after dark then. When I got to the city, we stayed underground. Patrols. You lot. The commons, too. They started snitching. In the city, you move underground? From bunker to bunker. Not anymore. No one cares now. I don't even have to hide. They think I'm another antisocial vagrant. I could walk straight into that town if I wanted. I just... He falls silent, his gaze fixed on the shacks huddled together across the water. The weapons cache under Saint Gilslane 22B. Point to it. In the basement, have you been there? So you finally found it. There must have been a small squadron's worth of arms in there. Elmer Graves, right? They were damaged beyond use. I know. So you've been there? Sleeping. <coughs> Some night. Ammo scrounging on others. Those my graves were shit, even before they corroded. Some had bullets in the chamber, however. You feel the dots connecting. Little dots on the map he's walked across. There's a small bunker under the Feld building. Have you stayed there? The propaganda bunker. <laughs> I used to, but not anymore. Propaganda bunker? They stored leaflets there. Broadcasting equipment, too. Made broadcasting things. Propaganda officers. I buried them with their leaflets. They killed themselves. Two young boys. Killed themselves? A lot of our boys did. I spent some winters there. Never liked it. Kept thinking of them. No need to go underground anymore. It's better in the ruins, on the ground. Why, why don't you just walk there? I don't want to. They're all traitors. Pigs, rabbits, and dogs. Men without ideals are only animals. He does not want to see life moving on. People forget him. Drinking. Laughing. Tell me another thing. The old man looks across the water. At the city. The ruins. The motorways rising above it. You said this is your termless surrender. Go with the RC. The coalition appointed mob that enforces bourgeois morals in Revachol. The so-called Lieutenant W. Freighter. We're in the we're with the RCL, let's just leave it at that. Let's. You represent the Moralist International. The enemies of humanity who took this city. I represent their adversary. Take me to them as a prisoner of war. I have the my weapon, I can no longer serve. No superiors can relieve me of my duty. You bulldoze them all to a mass grave for trying to free humanity. <laughs> his hand shakes and he breaks into a coughing fit. A spray of blood from his mouth on the black charcoal in the fire. Really, the royalist on the coast said. 
You never signed the Revolutionian Instrument of Surrender. Liberal reactionaries signed that instrument. Traitors who should have been burned alive. I answer to the Communist Party. Is that part of why you've been here all this time? Because the party didn't surrender? He just wipes the blood from his chin. Understood. I don't think you did. You live in a delusion. Radio shows, speed racing, and sporting goods. It's not real. So you're a communist soldier from the communist army? No, I am not a soldier. I am an ideological officer. I belong to the party, not the army. But you said you were trained and assigned to the defense court. Trained in historical materialism then assigned as a political commissar by the party. These things used to mean something. That means you're a trained communist, right? He nods slowly, then another tremor. Points to yourself, I'm also a communist. No, you're not. <coughs> you're a liberal. No, I really am a communist. I have communist thoughts in my head. They died fighting for communism. Are you dead? No. You're an inert lump with a gun. Detective, we have not come here to discuss ideology. He then turns to the old man. <laughs> we have come to ask questions regarding a murder investigation. The old man spits into the fire pit. He does not say anything more. A jitter passes his lower body. There's definitely something off with his body. Something more than just metabolism, or even cancer. I have another serious question for you. There's nothing serious in this world. It's a farce. What have you been using this gun for? I've used it for killing people. Killing people? It's a gun. That's what they're for. You want a moralist euphemism? Defending your family and your property. I haven't done that. I've used it to kill people. Interesting. During or after the war? There is no after the war. Class war is never over. So is continued killing after hostilities ended. Okay. Okay. This is it. You can feel it. Like battery acid on the tip of your tongue. Something you haven't felt in a while. But... But what? This is what you live for. This is the shit. The great serotonin jackpot. The solution. All right. Go in straight. No euphemisms. He doesn't like those. No, no. Be careful now. Slow and steady does it. Make him repeat it first. Don't mess this up. Remember... <laughs> He wants to tell you it personally. Did you use that gun to shoot and kill a colonel and of the security contractor colonel? The who now? He leans in and cups his ear. He heard you. He just wants to hear you say it again. This is dramatic flair on his part. Right choice. We're in. Do it, sire. The corpse in ceramic armor hanging behind the whirling in rags. Did you shoot him? Oh, yes. That one. Ugly piece of work, that boy. Did you kill him? The lieutenant takes a sudden step toward him. I am a son of a welder and an officer of the commune of Revachal. I do not collaborate with murderers and pederasts of the liberal regime. A drop of blood in the saliva. Exhaust him with proof. Pile it all on him. Get a confession. The scent of blood in the air. But what else? There was something you can't remember. Something about the traps. Suddenly, all those traps are so confusing. Go with something else first. We've got the ballistics. Point to the tower. The shot came from this island. I saw you poking around there. 
looking for evidence. You're damn diligent when it comes to dead fascists. Did you like the view? You had direct visibility. They are embrasures in the concrete, specifically meant for a top follow to use. And you had a long range rifle in your possession. Lieutenant softens his voice. You've been here a long time, Mr. Drast. Too long. You clearly need medical aid. I'm ready to die. <coughs> I've done my part. He's practically admitted to it. Dead fascists for fascists. Done his part. The view was perfect. With a pair of binoculars, I could have seen in the room. Because it's a sniper's nest, you stupid fuck. Radio Gosh is right. You have worms in your brain. I don't need your cooperation. I've got this. Show him the Triangon 4.46. Four Not a lot of guns around that use military grade ammunition, are there? It's a real gun. Not like your musketeer pistols. You look like imbeciles. Why don't you ask them to give you real weapons? <laughs> Going against automatic rifles with these toy guns. Of course you got those boys killed. Bam, he saw you. He's watched it happen. He would have a good view of the tribunal from here. It's not just empty boasting. So he saw you. Okay. So what? Don't let it divert you. Stop changing the subject. We have the murder weapon. You know what? You're right. I'm convinced this made the shot. Should we call it? I'm calling it. Oh, damn it. <laughs> I'm calling it. We have the murder weapon. Good. Lieutenant takes out his notebook and draws a single line. This feels good, doesn't it? Telling things up like this. When you have the murder weapon, you have the killer. Murder. The old man does not say more. He just glances into the reeds and twitches once more. Come on, what am I forgetting? Hit yourself on the side of your head. Wait, here it comes. The goddamn Maybells. The dried Maybells on Clausio's roof. Oh, yes. There were Maybells in the grass when you got here. And Maybells on Clausius' balcony. And nowhere else. Nowhere in all of Martinez have you seen them. Wait, don't forget the footprints. The diagonal prints in the dust in the secret space behind Clausius' bedroom. Now, they're gonna come up. Of course. Thank you, Head. Thank you. You got it. Remember, the boot prints were like no modern soul. Maybe don't beat yourself anymore, though. You're not immortal. Maybells, behind the victim's window. I saw them growing here. Point to them. Damn Maybells. The whole island is turning white with them. He seems tender something. Nostalgic even. A strange mood swing. So many this year, too. The spring is coming. No. It's already here. Wash the filth away. A young woman called Classe. Ring any bells? Flowers like these were behind her window. You know her, right? She had an intimate relations with that victim, the merc mercenary. With the victim. He turns his sight from the whitening field of flower and then falls silent. Then the muscles in his jaw twitch of spasm. Don't leave any loose ends. Get him on everything. I wonder what brand of boots you're wearing. Everything is brands with you individualists. Who cares what brand my shoes are? Sansa. Some shit. Show me the souls, please, Mr. Thomas. Fucking imbecile. The old man stretches out his leg. A black and white spiral pattern covers the sole of the worn out running shoes on his feet. The maker is sensory. The model is Cordobay, and the size is 43. These are not the unusual horizontal pattern soles you saw in the dust on the floor mm. of the hidden room. They do, however, seem to be about the same size. The size fits, but not the soul. Wait, maybe it's simpler than that. So, he doesn't have to be wearing them right now. People change shoes. It doesn't mean you weren't there, near the room when the victim died in, sneaking around. Racking those brains, are you? Desperate to report something back to your masters. They must have really loved that. 
the lieutenant gives you a quick sideways glance and nods to acknowledge. The prints were his. You can see it in those eyes. He can't keep them from flickering, looking for something. The old man stares at his own prints in the ash around the fire. Silent suddenly, some strange process within it. A gush of wind. Seagulls in the distance. You know who he was. A coalition trained murderer. Armored and armed. He wasn't human. The blunt end of a hammer. Dripping with blood. He was a soldier too. He was a man. Beating us to the ground. Moaning with joy. You hounds get so thorough when a company trained killer dies. I haven't seen you on this coast for 14 years. No, maybe I should have killed one sooner. Got your attention. Now you stop eating druggies and prostitutes in your basement. Now you come to investigate. Not when they die by the hundreds. He breathes through flared nostrils. This is it. Shot him. Shot him. Say shot him, not kill him. So you shot him? One paramilitary less in Revachol. You can almost see him squeeze, squeeze a tear out of his eye. His fists begin to tremble from the anger. The lieutenant raises his right arm to our shield. Hush. He does not need to be pushed anymore. The ball is rolling. Hold your breath. I have them in my sights. Both of them. Him and the whole. I was breathing in faith. And I pulled the trigger and flew on the air until I landed in his mouth. He begins to smile. I didn't think I had a shot like that in me anymore. I did. I saw him kneel there with his mouth full of death and that stupid look on his face. And his dick still in there. Then what? Nothing. I went to sleep. Next morning, there were Maybells everywhere. The world was white, or what's left of it anyway. My last spring here. I knew the fascists would come to avenge their own, and so they did. Mr. Dras, are you aware you're confessing to murder? The lieutenant asks for a second of silence, after a second of silence. Yes. A single word is all he gives. Then, the victim and a young woman having sex through the scope of your rifle that night before you shot him. Lieutenant takes out his notebook slowly, very slowly. The old man nods. Why? Because that's what they were doing. He shrugs, then smacks his lips. The motive. This is where the motive is going to come from. I don't understand. Do you, detective? I don't understand this part. Have fun lurking. Why were you looking at them that night? I'm always looking. He cocks his head to the side, then turns his eyes to the city. Another tremor passes his right side, lower in intensity. Are you always looking through the scope of a rifle? I'm just trying to understand. A rifle scope has the best magnification. And if you don't like it? You pull the trigger? Yes. Think of it as a form of he will not stop now. These dialectical materialist types never do exploit it. What specifically did you not like about what you saw the night of the murder? Them. Fuck it. I didn't like that. So you were jealous? Jealousy is a reactionary concept. I didn't like that we were enjoying himself, drugged out, soothed in the arms of a young woman. I wanted him to die so he could not enjoy life anymore. And I wanted to see his head explode. That too. She should know better than to hold a child murderer between her thighs. I knew he'd be there for one more second. Writhing. That's all it takes for the bullet to reach his head. 
Now that I think of it, I wasn't aiming for his mouth. I wanted his brains to spill out on her. But you can't have everything. How long had you been watching her? Since she came to Martinez. I saw her sneaking in the reeds early in the morning behind the fell building. It was dark, still winter. She didn't have her skimpy outfit on then. Just a spot in the night, moving. Past the fell building on the coast. What was she doing there? Hiding something in the water. She had a fag after she'd done it. I was up in the ruins there. She couldn't see me, but I could see her smoking. She was nervous, but not scared. And beautiful. What do you think she hid there? Her passport and ticket to be here. <coughs> and from there to Cachet Bru. Some kind of hidden container on the coast? You looked into it? Yes, after she'd gone. It was a submersible. Well made, actually. It's nothing. We should have better her to tell us about this. Did you take the documents? No. I put them back. Why would I take them? I'm not going to found. No. I mean... Moving on, did you continue watching her after this? I did. She had a face like an archipelago with those birthmarks. And a body hard and lean, and bruised all over, black and yellow. I could see she's taken a beating. I could see who she was, too. A spook. On the run. Rever shawls the Cloaker of Capital now. All the bag men and arms dealers end up here to do drugs and have sex like animals. You could tell she was a spook from the documents? She had different color hair on the photo, and glasses, forged, some sordid bourgeois affair. I heard about this kind of thing on the radio. He set it up for you. The bruises. You can't make that out in a scope. And you could see her bruises through the scope of a rifle? You can't see bruises through a scope. It's just a blur. How does he know about those minute... Yeah, details about her body. It quickly comes to me. The bruises on her body, any chance you'd seen them through a hole in the wall? Oh, yes. Cutting those drugs of hers into little lines with a knife. Masturbating. Everything in him fills with impossible longing. All at once. Did you make that hole? With a clip point knife. Good for listening in, too. Ever see her through a window on a roof? Like that, too. Yes. Bending like a bow against the glass. You've been to the secret route behind those whirling in rags. Those were your footprints there. You just changed your shoes. I've been through all of Martinez. Every nook and cranny. And that, too. Yes, that, too. The things they did in that little room. What she do to feel good. Funny the way the light works. You turn it on inside and it gets so dark out you can't see a man looking in. I learned that in the twenties when they were still hunting me. I've seen people do some shit, but... He keeps shaking his head. Those two took the cake. You hear the familiar scribble of the lieutenant's pen. A quick glance at you. One more loose end now. We're doing this, Detective. How did you get in there? The hidden pin will watch up. I can just walk in there now after a good wash. I told you, they think I'm an antisocial. Closing hour is a good time. The kitchen's empty. You had to open the steel door in the kitchen? How? I got that open a long time ago. Some bourgeois game merchant lived there. I don't know. Fifteen years ago, he left spare keys all over, and I took one. Then I saw her turn the light on one night in my scope. He points towards the whirling in rags. How long had you been watching her? Since she came to Martinez. I saw her sneaking in the reeds early in the morning behind the fell building. It was dark, still 
winter. She didn't pass the fell building on the top. Hiding something. And beautiful. Yeah. It's not me. No. I put them back. I did. I could see. You could tell she She had. He's setting the bruises. You can't make them. You can't see bruises through a skull. Did you have feelings for that woman? There's... There's nothing to hold on to. Only this. It's, it's not enough. The coals of his eyes glisten suddenly, like stones dripping with water. Is he crying? Man needs to feel something else. In this fight, it helps if you have your eye on something there. It's weakness, I know. Was that why you left her the dried flowers behind the window? No. Why then? He starts to shake his head again, a sunflower on a withered stalk. I don't really know. I was there one night and she was crying, like a child, in the corner of her room on the floor. Like she does sometimes. When was this? The day after I killed him. And you brought her Maybells? Yes. I don't know why I do the things I do. You wanted to console her. Maybe. I told you. I have holes in my brain now. I wouldn't just sit here waiting for you. If you came ten years ago, I would have killed you. He wipes his eye. In the silence, the lieutenant draws a line in his notes, then nods at you once more. One more down. So in conclusion, it wasn't about him, it was about her. Her. He repeats, staring at the ashes, then the reeds. There's a twitch in the corner of his eye. The lieutenant nods at you in acknowledgement. That's it. Motive. We have it. Where is she, that classier? I haven't seen her there for days. She got away. But she let us here first. She figured out someone was watching her from the sea fort. Gone. I knew it. She kept staring into the scope of this last week at the island. Like she knew. He sighs. She looked at night, crying, smoking on the roof, staring right into me. It doesn't matter. He knew she knows. She was looking at the island, figuring it out. Day by day, cigarette by cigarette. We could get more. We've got him talking. Been looking at anything else you haven't liked? A tragic comedy. Druggies, prostitutes, and rentals. More specifically? Specifically, the whole city is a charm on our Stripped clean and draped in neon. But Martinez. Martinez is the worst. How come? Because of the racists. Everyone is a racist in Martinez. It's their favorite thing to do in the whole world. Listening to race themed radio shows. In the ruins. In their lorry. He points inland. Come. Oh full of steroids and Radio Revachon 92. Race this, race that. It's all sanctioned by that social democratic union and the farce of a social democrat who runs it. Mr. Clare? Yes, the fly larva in his container. He let some nihilistic advertising yuppies erect a statue of Philippe III, a syphilitic murderer on the town square to spit on the working class. Let him finish, do not interrupt. Not since the serfs of ancient Pericarnassus has history produced a more inert social class than the Martinez proletariat. The rest of Revachol at least pretends to rebuild. These people still live in ruins. Intense, like animals, like those boom boom morons a pity they didn't drown in that tent of theirs. He keeps shaking his head with sorrow for the sight he missed. Nod. The worst of them is the blood-drenched Sucreon on her yacht, licking her lips. The old whore's gone now. Her gun-toting porcelain men are dead. So, 
actually know. The worst is that old cop parading around in his uniform, throwing balls all day. It's not enough that the racists and liberals are dancing on our graves. The old loyalist ghouls still parade the ruins, too. Every morning he's there, while the parasites he fought to protect are off in Ozon or Quayamoran, or some other island they built their palaces on, feeding on drugs and having sex with their own children. Okay, then. That's all the rich really want. Sex with their own children. Ew. Throughout history, even the royal bloodline of the suzerain, it's all just an excuse for them to have sordid sex. At least that old cunt is sell now dead. Mm-hmm. Now I have some questions about this. We did good when we pushed him under the horse car. Until in the thirties. Those disco wars. He breathes in, his breath heavy with hatred. You cannot make out a single word. The disco whores are too much. Hatred shuts down his brain's language center. Leave it only a nonsensical sputter. There was something about a statue and nihilistic advertising agency people. Might be worth investigating. Must I? I'm glad we talked about this now. It's all gone. Josef Lilevanchnik Leonovich Dros, you were under arrest for the murder of Ellis Kortanir. What? But you said I would be taken to the... Your wayfarer rights have been suspended. Information provided to the officers on the scene will be used against you by the prosecution. You will be given legal counsel within one week and must face court in 44 days. Do you understand? Do you understand? But... Do you understand, sir? No, I don't want to. I have to stay here. He looks at the reeds, eyes submerged, growing in growing terror. He's sweating. Beads are forming on his forehead. Pupils are dilated too. Eyes getting blacker and blacker. Your confirmation is not required, sir. Now on to the boat. Wait. There it is again, to your north, as it has been since you came to the coast. The reeds whisper, stalks rubbing against each other. But then, in the middle of it... What? Something completely different. It sounds like a bow, very slowly being drawn against the strings of a violin. A very small violin, made of reeds and rushes. Maybe there is room for three on the boat. Shushkim, do you hear that? What? What are you talking about? Is this... really us? Your skin crawls. What? Holy shit! It's huge! Oh! Oh, it's a big bitch! Kim! Get the camera! A delicate tangle of arms and legs unfolds from the reeds, limb by limb. To them, just stand there, moving its scythe like arms in ghostly silence. It's fucking here! What is that? Point to it! What are you talking about? The old man looks at the reeds, then at you. The giant stick insect! He looks confused. The stick insect is over three meters tall. <gasps> it you, its tiny pinprick eyes and its grotesque small head. Hi. You feel your legs shaking under you and your gun hand move to your holster. But you don't have a gun. There is! I see it! Tell me what you see, damn it. I can't make out one small thing in the Kim, can you see it? I can see it. <gasps> Kim, can you see it? Four simple words. Thank God. If you can see, then you're not insane. What that means, it 
lights are really there, spinning slowly, in absolute silence, its limbs long and slender. Be very, very careful. The lieutenant whispers, then takes a step towards the giant arthropod. Kim, get the camera! See, Kim, I told you he was real! Hi, buddy! The creature stands on long, stilt like legs, antennae hanging from his head like a woman's hair, white and curled at the tips. It is no more than five steps away from me. Reed like tufts stick out of its joints. As the insect moves its forearms, it produces a faint hiss, like a reel to reel machine spinning after the tape breaks. The hiss is different from the strings you heard before. It says something else in a lower pitch. Approach it carefully. Hi! Slowly, with your breath held, you take two small steps toward the phasma. The creature lets out a series of ultrasonic clicks that swarm around your head like swallows. Like laughter, a sort of happiness. Sweat drips from your brow, soaking your chest. You reek of it, your chemicals. Hissing and clicking, it extends its memorable light antennae to greet you. You're right below it now, looking up at the colossal chitin of its white limbs. The Whisper, head okay, Kim. Is crowned by reeds, and its eyes are like small droplets of water. Okay, Kim, take the picture. Okay. With the, with the slow ring of metal, the lieutenant slides the lens open and raises it to eye level. There is no change in the insect's motion while it's being aimed by the camera. It remains fixated on you. In three. If it moves, you jump back. I'll shoot. Here we go. Three, two, one. The shrill flash of the camera cuts the air like the blade oh. of a sword. The phasmid freezes in its bright light. Head turned toward the lieutenant, hypnotized by the flash. It stands frozen before you. It's beautiful. I got it. Carefully. <laughs> Carefully pet its scythe-like forearm. The limb before you is incredibly light, like eggshell. It's much lighter than a reed. You feel a soft push could tip the creature over. Its hollow exoskeleton collapsing. This is so much more important than the murder right now. Warning. Pull your hand away. A sudden shiver passes the limb. Looks like the creature is awakening. Wave by wave from its stupor. Some sort of countdown process is happening. That's all you have time to think. We got it. Back off. Another shudder pulses through the creature's limbs. It jolts back to life, like a record continuing where it left off, in a swaying, praying motion. Even the small black pearls of its eyes do not stray from you. Hello, I'm Harry. I don't really know who I am. No reply. Total ancient silence comes from its mouth, along with what appears to be some kind of foam. The stridulations of its limbs continue all around you. Stand on your tiptoes and look more closely. You were right. Little bubbles form on the mouth parts of the creature, on its segmented lower lip. It looks to be foaming, slowly. The foam is white, then yellowish. The faintest smell, like you've never felt before, like burnt roses. Kim, it's foaming. Careful, it may be poisonous. Lieutenant watches you apprehensively. The foam slowly turns a darker shade, like burnt caramel, as the insect moves its mouth parts, masticating. The little bubbles begin to burst, one by one, letting out that same smell, like summer burn. Raise your hand slowly. The insect stops its stridulation, seeming to observe you. 
Below its crown of reeds, little pinprick eyes detect motion, glittering. The world stands still around you. Suddenly, there is silence. Put your hand down. The invertebrate comes back to life, stridulating. Sets of complex eyes follow you, moving in tandem on either side of the insect's small head. Tell me, what are you doing? I it speaks to me. I exist too. Tell me what it's like for you. I'm ill. What is your illness? I am ill in my head. I'm insane. That's how it is for me. I am not. There isn't even a central nervous system in my head. Only mouth part, where it can wipe that part. Now I will tell you how it is for me. For me, it's a series of half-lit images. A kind of darkness. Being intruded upon. Transient. Deep. Intruded upon by what? Shades of plants and animals. An internal sensation. A swarm of sound. Tiny vibrations from the inside of my forearm. All speak of complexities totally beyond my understanding. I am at the end of an era funnel. Weightless. So light. It only feels like something to be in it. In truth, perhaps I'm nothing. I certainly do not have a soul. And if I did, it would never end. You're the type of animal I would like to be. Are you sure? Yes, I am sure. Why do you ask? Sometimes, on morning, I will grow a lost limb. One time something went wrong, and a small leg replaced the missing antenna. That's cool. No. The leg tried to move around independently, making it hard to walk. You don't have a foot there now. Yes. Thankfully someone ate it. The next time I hold it, I grow an antenna again. I am a detective. So am I. I was born to detect sucrose rewards and semiochemicals. What were you born to detect? The killer. He's in a bad state. Deteriorating faster. He thinks I am beneficial to him, but I am not. I only quicken his deterioration. I know, I think she's really cute too. You're destroying him? Very slowly. And only because he won't go away. It is meant to keep them from noticing me, to interfere with the pictures in their heads. But he has looked at me for too long, and I am destroying him. Is this a dream? What is happening? No. Where does this come from, all this, around us, the world? Not even the birds know that. Not even the water even. Then all we can do is beat our fists against it. Day after day, with no answer. You can also eat it. If he's a meat, you can put it in your mouth. Yum yum. Or a reed. <laughs> yum yum. Wait, so... You look like a reed and you eat reeds? Yes, they don't mind. Have you accidentally eaten another reed phasmid? Yes. I was crawling myself and ate the little ones. It was winter, and I won't cough at the wrong time. It was an accident. What exactly are you? I am an all-known species of the order from Pasmodia, endemic to the Insolandia Isola. For the last 350 years, I have hidden in plain sun, masquerading as the reeds. Molding, calling myself, unfolding at night to play with trash bins and boys. No one unnoticed by the first settlers and the land surveyors of the Sussurin. Also, by the soldiers of the revolution and the officials of the occupation. Even the Samanese islanders who came here first, but did not stay, have not seen me. I have stayed here in two full forms of government and two scientific revolutions until I was accidentally discovered by a detective of the cities of Malaysia in Revolution, district of Martinez, March 51. That's insane. No, you are. 
more of how we encounter it is by a morality they need in life for it. But it is you who are told to extreme madness. A volatile senior nerve system ominously near to the planet. A pale truth came with you. No one remembers it before you. The Megarians do not. The radial asymmetrics do not. There is an almost unanimous agreement between the birds and the plants that you are going to destroy us all. Be quiet, Andrew. She's just baby. Wait, what's the pale? It is a nervous shadow cast into the world by you. It is a way of reality. A great, unnatural territory. It definitely coincides with the arrival of the human mind. I don't think I have that kind of power. You are a violent and irrepressible miracle. The vacuum of cosmos and the stars burning in it are afraid of you. In enough time, you will wipe us all out and replace us with nothing. Just by accident. She's baby. How? I suspect it will be something like the oxygen holocaust that wiped out an aerobic life 26 billion years ago when organisms first started breathing. Only much worse. Instead of air, we exhale thoughts. There are no trees that eat thoughts. Where's how? Everything your eyes touch was back there. But you had a nose mirror. But if you win, I'm still here. Please don't be. What if you misplace us all one day? Or just forget? I will be extra, extra careful not to blink stick insect. Don't worry. Please be. Or oh, one day. One of you will close your eyes and sign, and open them to see that none of this ever existed. Kim, am I having a violent epileptic seizure? It doesn't look like that, no. What does it look like? You're just tearing me. Then I think I'm having a vision about the final fate of mankind. Okay. Is it somehow related to the case? No, I told you that's what it's about, our fate. I think you should back away from the unstudied species now. I have to say goodbye now. I have no more thoughts. That was all. No. There is one more. Of all the creatures I've met, you were the kindest. Thank you. I also have one more thing to say to you. That woman. Turn from the ruin. Turn and go forward. Do it for the working class. I will try. She was middle class. It doesn't take a three meter stick insect to tell you that. Disengage slowly. As you're turning away, the phasmid mirrors your movements, stepping on the water, the long limbs carrying its feather weight without breaking its surface. Goodbye. I love you. I hope you have a nice meal. Oh shit, she running. Bye, girl. <laughs> the <laughs> Our suspect is having- Like that, it's gone. Skating away across the sea's calm mirror, like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but circles on the water. Our vic- our, our- our- not victim. Our suspect is having, like, a breakdown, and, like, I'm just over here talking to my, like, stick bug friend. And something under it, in the place it stood, Bobby. Among the ruins, a collection of items. It's gone. Lieutenant looks north with his hand raised to his brow. What's that? In the reeds. Looks like a nest of some sort. We should have you. It can walk on water? Apparently, yes. Like a water strider. Only, I've never seen anything like that in my life. What now? What now? He's put his hand into... The old man behind you repeats seat suddenly. He's put his hand into the ash. It's dirty and black. In some kind of strange, semi-catatonic state. Our suspect is not looking so good. We need to check on him. <laughs> Did it leave babies? Fairweather T-500 helmet and a rifle scope. Thanks, girl. Love you. That was great. I'm so happy we found her. What is it? 
What do you want from me? I can't go. Sir, how could you not see the phasmid? He stares at the reeds and so falls silent. Mr. Dutton? The man does not respond. He keeps staring. Black eyes glazed over and bulging from their sockets. His gap toothed mouth shaking. With fear and yawning. Like an addict of some terrible substance. Touch his shoulder gently. The plastic cake feels coarse. A light shiver passes the man. Other than that, no reaction. He feels small and frail. He's going into some kind of psychomotor immobility. The good news is this solves our transportation problem, doesn't it, Mr. Dollars? The trembling mouth appears to sigh. Between this and the broken tire he's used for a boat, I think it's safe to leave him here while we go and get help. It will need to be medicated first, I'm afraid. We found some things in the Phasman's nest, Mr. Dross. He stares into the reeds. Your words don't stir anything in him. Show him the ceramic sure. helmet. Nothing. Just dull staring. Not even rage left, wherever he is. If Kuno kicked it into the sea, as he said he did, the ebb would put it back here. This makes sense. Mr. Dross could have picked it up. Or the Phasmid even. If he did, this is incredible. Show him the detached scope. I... I lost... You lost it, Mr. Dross? He turns his eyes to the reeds again, as he's done so many times. Beige and white stripes. He lost the scope. Then it somehow made its way over there. With the help of the magpie phasmid. The lieutenant observes the lens sparkle in your hand. This sight is a T9, Mr. Dross. Was it attached <clears throat> to the rifle when you made the shot? Silence. Not even a sigh. You've gotten all you will out of this poor fool. I'm going to let you rest now, Mr. Dross. The plastic cape flaps around his face in a gust of wind. His back is slouched and his mouth open. The blacks of his eyes are receding. His pupils are returning to normal. The strength has all gone out of him. Just frail old bones in a sack of tracksuit trousers and a windbreaker. What happened to this man? Old age and shock. I think it was the phasmid. Yes, the arrest and the appearance of the phasmid. The combined stress. But you think it's something more than that, don't you? There's much more. Remember what it said when it spoke. I talked to the Phasmid and it said it's destroying him. You should be more careful, did it? Are you sure it wasn't having an effect on you? Maybe. Anyways, it's only trying to remain unseen. The degradation has a side effect. A valid hunch. Long term exposure to something like that could be neurodegenerative. Also, please be careful when approaching a non species in the future. Okay. He's been here for a long time. Who knows how much of it's in its company? He did seem distressed when it finally came to arresting him. Like he didn't want to leave this place. And the insect, maybe. He looks at his notebook. I have absolutely forgotten to take notes. I hope I remember all of this. This will be one hand of a report. Thank God we have the photo. No one would believe you without it. Hang tight. We should think about getting back to the mainland to get help. He'll be safe here, if we don't take too long. All right. Good, because I'm getting EP. Wow, the Phasmid, that was so exciting. Come on now. It's me, Velvet. The five hour energy under your couch. Drink me up to become a prophet of this sad new age. I don't have any five hour energy under my couch. You lie to me. The skiff is swaying from the waves by the dock. Let's return to the mainland. Lex, we are done here. 
He says, adjusting his glasses as he looks over the water. Please don't make me watch the boat scene again. You didn't check. You're deluding yourself. I'm here. Oh, 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 oh. But for the sound of conversation on the water, there is someone inland waiting for you. Two men and a woman stand on the concrete square of a nameless village, looking at a small yellow boat as it draws closer. The sea is calm. You reach the jetty and climb out of the skiff. Hello. Look what the tide brought here. The man says in a measured tone. Suddenly, his expression changes and he tilts his head. You look like a fucking clown, Harry. Hey! Not like a funny police officer, but like a real life, full time, fly in the face, unicycle riding circus and for you. Let me, I, my kimono is very handsome. Whatever this is, it is completely unequal to compared to what you just seen. No one else seems bothered by my style. Bothered by it, Harry? You're a goddamn cop. They're afraid of you. Oh, that explains it. Yes, that has always explained it. Vic, calm down. Forget about this. There's a giant. We're not forgetting about anything. Look at you. Who are you people? Hello, um, Trent Heidelstein. I believe we've met on several occasions. I'm your goddamn partner, Jean Vicomar, and this is your special task force. Or what's left of it. Special consultant Trent Heidelstein, battle officer Gilles Dino. Hi. We've come to scrape what's left of you off the pavement. Lieutenant Kim Kisuragi, Prison 57. We've just come from the island, where our investigation led us. The sea is making even him feel as though he has to justify you. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> we might need your help with something later. He adds, suddenly regaining his confidence. As if he recalled that he's in fact a decorated police lieutenant. <laughs> <laughs> but this is clearly a departmental matter, so I'm going to leave you to discuss it among yourself. No, Kim, you gotta have my back. Let's destroy them. It's good to meet you, Lieutenant Kitsuhagi. She says, warmly flashing the lieutenant the tiniest of smiles. What's this about? Ari, we want to help you. Taunt, I believe this is where you come in. Um, I don't... Oh, I don't know what I'm doing here. I was asked to participate as an expert. I think I need to manage your expectations a little. I'm at best an enthusiast in cognitive science. My background is in something else entirely. I engage in neurology on a merely theoretical level. In fact, I should probably get going. No, Trump, it's too late. You're part of this shit now. What have you got to say for yourself, shit -gen? What does he have to say for himself? He left you to catch the bullets. Shit, kid. What an interesting wonder. What's a shit, kid? You. Shit, kid. That's you. Maybe you deserved it. How did you know I was here? The cafeteria manager you fucked over told us where you went. Hey! He's... <laughs> He said that I did good. <laughs> Turn to face the general direction of the whirling and yell, Damn you, cafeteria manager! You've betrayed me for the last time! Speaking of which, the giant I do in front of his building, in red, governed on marked fuel. Did you do that? It was this one junior delinquent. I don't know. It had shit kid written all over it. You aren't the man with the sunglasses at all. You're not even blonde. Guilty as charged. I heard you'd lost your mind and your memory. I wanted to see if it was true. And it was. Good work, Harry. You're insane now. There's one less person for me and everyone else to rely on. Stop being so mean, I lost my memories. He was too sarcastic for you to realize who he was. I don't like being lied to. I didn't lie to you. No one lies to you. You were so fucked up on booze you couldn't recognize your own partner. You never told me you're not the horse-faced woman. I don't know. My name is not horse-faced woman. It's Judith Mino. I was assigned to your unit two months ago. I thought we were friends. I'm sorry, Officer Minot. Okay. You're my commanding officer. 
I... I really want to respect you. I want us to have a normal relationship. That will never happen, Jude. He's the rudest man on earth. He's the reason why the rest of us have to take sensitivity training. And I hate sensitivity training. So Trant Heddlestam turns out to be special consultant Trant Heddlestam? Yes, I'm Han Heilerstam. I never said I wasn't Han Heilerstam. Wait, so what was up with the kid then? Mikael? Mikael is my son. Oh yeah? What was with all the interesting history? Spying on me? No, I was just interested in the Feld building and the Martinez beachhead. And Mikael wanted to see Martinez. It was a coincidence. Him being there with his son, it was not a coincidence. It's difficult to see, but he was worried about you. And also interested in the Feld building. So what are you special consulting here? What indeed? I was asked to share my take on some of the more obscure theories developed in Königstein in the thirties, like partial psychotraumatic amnesia, group personality theory. He's here to see if you're insane. He is smart. Let's move on. You mentioned a task force? Yeah, major crimes unit under Lieutenant Dubois and Vicomar. Ring any bells? Refresh my memory. Who else is in this? Refresh your memory? It's a goddamn major crimes unit. There's you, me, Jude, drunk fucking Idolstown, and Guillaume Baby. He stares at you. I'm technically just a civilian advisor. Oh, fuck you. You're part of this shit show. Uh, yeah, um, first, who's Guillaume Bevy? Oh, that's an interesting story, actually. Guillaume Bevy is a police reporter who joined our team. He was really good. Then he left because he lost faith in your ability to lead the unit. Oh man. Other people have left too. Good, smart people. People we won't get back. Only me and this really patient patrol officer are still here. And Trump because I'm forcing him to stay. Okay, so what does the unit do? Do? It's a major crimes unit. <laughs> we clear the desk of cases so Precinct 41 doesn't look like the worst station in town. We are shit here now, Harry. Because of you. <laughs> the 41st is in. He trails off, not wishing to finish the sentence. Where have you been all this time? There was a mercenary tribunal. God damn it, Harry. He shifts his weight, crosses his arm, and looks you in the eye. You told us to fuck off. You said we're cramping your style. Your detective god. Fuck everything. All we burn. Detect or die. Wait, so you let me face a squad of trained killers alone just to teach me a lesson? It wasn't like that. Fuck you, Harry. We didn't know there was gonna be a tribunal, did we? Why didn't you detect or die then? Oh, you think it was cool you saying that? Aesthetic somehow? You were crying when we got here. Breaking things. You said we were going into the abyss. None of us wanted to see the abyss. So we fucked off. <sighs> like you told us to. None of this is ringing any bells. The bells aren't ringing because you have brain damage. Trump, this is where you come in. How bad is it? Well, he doesn't have visible tremors. He talks without slurring. He can drive a boat. He's standing. Reason. All good signs, but complete retrograde amnesia. Episodic and semantic. Meaning, you forgot both who you are and the definitions of money. Isola, hell, and so on. As displayed in the station call, our interactions with him and... I don't want to be a snitch, but also mine with him before when Harry did not seem to know who I was. It's all very interesting. Interesting? Yes, interesting. I have my theories, but I would like to hear Harry's thoughts first. Harry, what do you think happened to you? Neurologically, psychologically, and why not socioeconomically? Something so sad happened to me that I couldn't be me anymore. It was a defense mechanism. Psychotraumatic amnesia? Trump? I can go for that. Shit, kid is a broken man. Always has been. Who isn't? I know I am. But you know what? I keep my shit together. Also, I know a person can't wipe out a mind. However traumatic it gets, that doesn't happen. You're lying. Or insane. Or both. But Detective Vigmer, he has blanked out before. I have? Yes, a couple of times. 
after some of the more serious vendors. One was after the two drugs case, the other when we looked into that mill. So you don't remember not remembering. Beautiful. Interesting. So at first he dipped his toes into it, prepared. That's where he would have gotten the idea, yes. Practice. And then he used alcohol to get there, so to speak. What do you mean? Well, here's my theory. What if this is an absolutely normal reaction to the world we live in? What if this is not a significant anomaly at all? Something to be explained, a protest, a defect. Look at the sensory input. He gestures towards the scenery. Look at the ruins, the neon. Listen to the radio, the multitudes, the people. Live here for 40 years. As a police detective, he's like a magnetic reader on the world tape to borrow a known metaphor. Harry's been pushed flat against it. Totally. Hardwired to the free market. He just needed for its end. Okay, Trump, thank you. That's absolutely meaningless. I'm glad we brought you. Will he or will he not be able to work in a major crimes unit? Is he a cretin now? I want to know that. He's not a cretin, and he is able to do work. If not in his previous leadership role, then as a line detective. But now? Now nothing. Now we're just going to stand here. Really? No. Now we discuss that. What the fuck did you do to a motor carriage? Why is it there, Harry? Oh. <laughs> I drove it into the ocean while I was drunk. The time had come. Tequila sunset. Ha ha ha. Ho ho ho. Tequila sunset. Not sunrise because you're almost dead. So funny, Harry. Thank you for fucking me. Thank you for destroying 45,000 real of police property that's coming out of my payslip. You know that, right? You're gonna get fired, and I'm gonna pay till I die. It doesn't matter. Your badge, Harry. Show me your badge. I got my badge right here. In a rush to demonstrate your badge, your eager fingers can't oh, sustain man. on the smooth Do my best. Damn. Ouch. Oops. You strained your elbow trying to catch that stupid thing. Damn it. Sorry. You juggle the badge for a second unsuccessfully and it lands on the ground some two meters away. He found it. He found it, John. It's his badge. And your gun? My gun. <laughs> As if having your badge and gun are natural states, not achievements. Gun, yeah, you don't have that. Maybe you can philosophize your way out of it. I may have pawned it. Anyway, it's gone now. <laughs> yeah, I checked the local pawn shop. You saw the pawn broker reveal a 9mm pistol to pay for boobs. It worked too, didn't it? You're drunk right now, aren't you? You fucking bomb, I can smell it all the way over here. I'm not drunk, I haven't started drinking again. So you forgot to drink? I don't buy it. Why do you smell like a corpse then? Cause I got shot in the dick! He's wounded. It's been a long week and he's handled an actual corpse. Yeah, I handled an actual corpse. I don't believe you. You're drunk. You let a suspect escape, a certain classic, because you were too drunk to assess a flight risk. Oh my god. We've read the report, Sari. You know Kitsuhagi's. We know. Okay, um... Not taking her in was the right thing to do. She gave us a vital clue that led us to the island. Oh, well, if she was nice. I'm not even gonna get into the other suspect, who also escaped. Yeah, it will be- She was gonna shoot herself! For the fact that you're ever a Claire's little peon now, doing I don't know what for him. That's small time stuff. That's nothing. That's a humorous anecdote. Compared to the eight people who were gunned down, the streets are literally red with blood, Harry. It was fucking mass murder. 
Why didn't fucking kill? <sighs> Everybody's so mean to me. Everyone's so mean to me. I just, I'm just little guy. I try my best. He did everything he could. We did everything we could. The company hired and vetted mercenaries. You to know the work between them and the local. He did so at considerable risk to his person. Remember, he was shot. We stopped an execution, not a negotiation. The loss of life was minimal compared to what it could have been. Also, I solved the case. It solved all of it. Detective, it's better if I do that. Okay, he says in a lowered voice. It's so much better if he does this. A million times better. Thank you for the input, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. I didn't mean to suggest you didn't handle the situation. <clears throat> he brushes a stray strand of hair out of his eye and coughs. He thinks of apologizing, but besides against him. You've spent the week with him on this case. What is your take? On um, the case? No, on me, your special boy. On Lieutenant Yulfretor du Bois. Well, the drinking, the gun losing, also losing the badge. That's so true. Although he has not been drinking on the job. Yeah, I've been a good boy. See? One week. I've been a good boy! Then there's the superstar. He likes to, from time to time, allude <sighs> to being a superstar low of the show. At first I thought it was a joke, but now I'm not so sure. <laughs> he says disco about 20 times. <laughs> what the fuck? No, I don't. <laughs> it's worrying. Especially considering his political views. Detective Dubois is, as you may know, a Mazovian social Oh my god. He wants to liquidate the ruling class, which, again, for a police officer, is a little bit. You should hear something. That's not a good idea. Yes, let's let the big boys talk. Other still, he is also an ultra liberal hustler who is always on the ground. How he reconciles these two points of view. I do not know, but he is vocal about both of them. I'm just a silly guy, Kim, come on. <laughs> and then there's the motor carriage in the sea, something I was not present for. But despite all this, he is a great detective, one of the best I have seen. Yeah. He can talk human beings into telling him everything, and he doesn't stop. In all the time I've spent with him, he has not once stopped pursuing me however far-fetched and tangential. He is tireless, madly driven, and he solved it near perfectly. In one week we have a confession, a murder weapon, and the perpetrator. Locked on the island right now, awaiting transportation. He apprehended a straggler who stayed hidden for 50 years, ever since the revolution, who's probably committed other murders over those years. Oh, and he also discovered a new species. Yeah, I discovered a new species. A new species? Yeah. A colossal stick insect. It was on the island, camouflaged as a reed. It uh, unfolded from the reeds. I think we may be dealing with the insulinium phasmid. Mm hmm He takes out the photo of the phasmid and shows it to the officers across the yard. The wind blows, flapping the glossy wood candle in his hand. You hear gasps beneath the howling of the wind. As you can see, it's about three meters tall. In fact, we think it may be the largest land invertebrate ever discovered. Boom shakalaka, motherfucker! Fucking hell is there. Is this somehow connected to the case? Kinda. Detective? Hmm, yes, I believe the pheromone animus may be responsible for the killer's mental degradation. The old man was not aware of the phasmid's presence, exhibiting a strange, atypical dementia. He fell into a stupor after its appearance. He became near catatonic. So it is connected. Yeah. See, I, 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 I knew it all along. I must say, this is absolutely extraordinary. It's, I don't even have words for it. Yes. It really does make it hard to fire the drunk. His tired eyes follow the photo as the lieutenant puts it away. This is a very, very sad man 
who has just seen something that's made him forget his sleepiness. Now you make your case. Now is the time. Now or never. We did it, Kim. We saved Revishal. There was also a dead man on a boardwalk, a missing person I found. Yes, yes. Fallen through a gap in a boardwalk. Drunk. How'd you know I found him? The body was transported to Precinct 41, our morgue. I had Tilbrook and Mullins take care of funeral arrangements and uh, family stuff. You're not the only cop in the world, Harry. This all comes back to us. Well, I did it. Still, good work with the missing person, Detective. Thank you, Judith. It's still a point for you. No denial. Uh... The killer, Lilana Jovich Droz, we have a strong motive for him. Liliana. Revolutionary matronym. A revolutionary matronym? Well, the custom started in Graft, where they have patronyms. Prasovich, Larsovich, etc. The revolutionaries saw this as a chauvinist atavism, so they used matronyms, derived from the mother's name instead. This man's mother was Lily. Miss Lillian's son, Lilianovich. The custom was overturned after the revolution failed, but not before it made it to Revachov. So. It is what a soldier of the ICM would be called. Thank you, Trot. Thank you for that piece of cultural theory. You said you have a motive? Of course, excuse me. I just thought it was noteworthy. He killed the mercenary in an act of jealousy. Jealousy? I thought this Lilianovich was an old male. To have been hiding for 50 years. By 70-something. A strange psychosexual fixation. Aggravated, possibly, by proximity to the Fasmid and its chemicals. He himself gave a political reason, said he had killed an enemy combatant. Also, we have a sniper's nest with full view of the room in which the mercenary died, right on the island, and two officers on the scene that Mr. Dross confessed to. It's a clean win. Oh, it's way more than that. Way, way more. I did all I could. Every second was a struggle. I've never doubted you can pull yourself together and work. In belt. Bouts don't last. I can still smell the booze on the wind. God damn it. Doesn't it ever leave? It is there. Like in your bones or something. It will pass in time. I'm just gonna leave that other stuff alone. So what do you say? Wanna take this hot shit back? I don't want to. But you discovered the new species, and sold the mother. He shrugs. So I have to, dude. Anything that ends the trial is okay with me. A quick nod. Agreed. The public relations potential of this is too valuable to let go. Okay. We have vehicles in the square, and the perpetrator needs to be taken into custody. Let's go. Now. Now you will finally get to know who you are. Wait, I have a few questions before we go about who I am. The man looks westward, impatiently, jingling his car keys in his pocket. The Phasmid. I need to tell Lena about this ASAP. Who is Lena? A cryptozoologist. She lives in Jamrock. She told me about this Phasmid. Well, good luck finding her once we get back. Really? I, I really like Kim's voice. She and her husband conducting the search for the Phasmid. It's their discovery. Oh, I'm sure we'll find them. They should know as soon as possible. It would do you good to deliver some positive news for a change. Watch out, bullshit friends. Lieutenant Kitzdragi, what will you do now? Well, first I will go back to my station and write the most detailed report anyone has ever seen. It will have to be good to cover all of these. Then I will have a serious talk with my captain. About what? Detective, we just stopped a small scale war. Something is happening to Revachol. He pulls up his collar and looks round, the cold spring light reflected in his lenses of, gla lenses of his glasses. I don't know what yet, but it's going to be a hard spring for the RCM. We need to get ready, infiltrate, investigate. Want to do that at Station 41? Talk to Captain Price? I'd rather not ruffle the feathers of two captains with my doom mongering. 
No, I mean investigate. Come work in precinct forty one. Work with Price? No, I with me. I know if I would fit in. I'm crazy enough. Can take the stress. He doesn't know how to finish the sentence. This truly came as a surprise to him. Not a bad one, but he's at a loss. Flattered. You'll yet knock it raggy. We would be flattered if you even considered. I would have to tie things up in GRIH first. But, I mean, whatever is coming, Jamrock will be more central to it than the Apple. The lieutenant turns very serious all of a sudden. And we also have a huge caseload, you know. Piles that we need to get back to. Mountains, even. I do like the sound of that. He returns her smile. He's really considering it. Who am I? Who are you? You're a gym teacher, Harry. What? Well, obviously you're not a gym teacher anymore, but... But before? Before you were a cop, you were a gym teacher in Cohon. It's getting really cold outside. Should we maybe... No way! I was a rock and roll singer! You haven't told us about that. You just told us about being a gym teacher. That does explain a lot. Harry, it explains everything. You're running around. The jumping, the bicep girl, your inexplicable facial hair. The collection of FLAN sportswear I've amassed. Your love of retro style dance music. How you were able to perform a 360 degree spin kick. Yeah, I had to save scum for that actually, Kim. When was this? When was I a gym teacher? In your 20s or late 20s. You've really let yourself go since then. Why did I join the RCM then? The regular. You found some chick. She inspired you to fight the big fight. Be more than you are. All that. You. Every morning, walking from Boy Jerome to teach Jim. She. Leaving for the academy with her spring coat on. The air filled with the smell of smoke and raspberries. And incredible hope. An ocean full of hope. Okay, I see now. I knew it. I knew no normal human being can run like that. <laughs> an honest to God gym teacher. Why am I like this? It's not a mystery. Some chick fucked you over. Also, you were drunk. Some chick? Who? Dora something. Dora England. Yeah, you mentioned the name. Not Dora the what? So we weren't even married? No one is married anymore. This is Reda Shol. When was this? God, I don't know. Six years ago. She was way before my time. Six years? Yeah, or seven. You're not doing too good there. It's an old man thing. Two old years equals one no more year. That and Dora Ingolun really tore you a new one. A big one. Who was she? Incredibly bangable. No, I meant what did she do? She was incredibly fuckable. A beautiful bourgeois woman. Way fish. Like a welkin, basically. Snow welkin. Blonde welkin. Heartbreak welkin. I've only seen a picture, but it's obvious you found a real spiritual connection with how pretty she was. One you never recuperated from. Look, the sun is about to go down. It's time to go. I think she talked to the Academy de Dao, east of the river. Way east. Hard to say which came first, the middle class cheek or the drink. Egg and the chicken kind of thing. The egg came first. My point is, you need to see a psychiatrist about this shit. Not a psychologist. Several degrees harder. Is there something harder than a psychiatrist? A forensic psychiatrist? Go talk to that. Okay. In other words, he's heard enough about this. Okay. I'm ready. Good. She looks at you then, Vic... Vic... Mer. Fuck it. Let's go. Trump brought his motor carriage. It's a 20 minute drive to Jamrock. The great district hums in the slowly falling snow. A chessboard of wooden houses, 80,000 living souls, and chimney stacks. Fire traps as far as the eye can see. From Main Street to Precinct 41, to Boogie Street, forking into the white horizon. You close your eyes and hear the dogs bark. A lone woman sits by a factory window, dreaming of meteorite strikes. On Rue de Saint-Jérôme, a square bullet slides into a square-shaped chamber. 
In old South, a man without eyelids smiles. Spring has come. It's time. Dawson? Yes. McLean? Yes. Hyrulstan? No. Lickmere? Yes. Dubois? Of course. Really? Nick Scott Lee looks up from the list. I hear he's unstable. You say that like it's a bad thing. Captain Ptolemy Price gestures with a ballpoint pen. It's dim in his office, and the curtains are drawn. Harry's our man. He'll pull through. When he does, he'll side with the people. Understood. Gottlieb returns to the list. Minna? Of course. Wonderful. Then can we please just go back to Jamrock now? Kim, you're my best friend. Yay! How are we all gonna fit in there? Also, doesn't Kim have his own car? Are we gonna drop him off? Yeah, like, are we gonna go get his ass? <laughs> wow, we finally finished Disco! Now I have to- Ugh, oh, damn, I already made my schedule for next week, fuck. <laughs> That was like two hours more than I was wanting to play, but okay. Ugh. Wow. Let's see. Who's streaming? Peachy. Lucky. Chris. Challenge run! I can't do anymore! <laughs> We gotta play Big Run tomorrow. We gotta go to bed. Ugh, big stretch. Yeah. It is my intention to finish games. I'm still- we're still gonna finish Nino Kuni eventually. <laughs> I just need to grind and I haven't been doing it because god, I fucking hate grinding, man. That's like my least favorite video game activity. Ah, bummer. Yeah, I do wish, I guess, like, we could have gotten our gun back, because maybe then the casualties wouldn't have been so bad, but, like, honestly, like, I didn't have whatever it wanted, so, like, fuck them, I guess, you know? <laughs> Can I skip the credits? I'm tired. Mm. 
yeah, it kind of really pushed us toward, like, obviously, like, like, it's like, here's the guy who did it. Like, I, I couldn't accuse anybody else. I think it would have been interesting if I could have, like, accused somebody else of doing it. Like, like a wrong ending of almost. <laughs> yeah. Think like I I'm glad in a way that like they like cuz I mean like if you fuck up a lot like you still get to the correct ending. But it'd be kind of nice if there was like 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 a couple different endings to choose from like like oh I think Ruby did it, you know. Like I did I I did not think Ruby did it. I was like, nah, she didn't fucking do it. But you know. Take a drink. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like the shootout could have gone better. Or I, I could have gone worse too. If I didn't warn Kim, he could have died. They could have shot him point blank. I'm so glad that check was easy. Like if Kim died, I would have, I would have restarted. Like, <laughs> I don't, we're not losing Kim. <laughs> He's my best friend. He's watched me be so embarrassing. Mhm. Mm yeah, it was it was pretty good. I liked it. It was a lot at times. Like I would I often play this game only for like an hour and a half or so at a time just because like it's so much. Like it's very I feel like it's very heavy. Like there's a lot a lot going on and stuff. Yeah, they do be making me cringe. I like every time I explain this game to somebody, I'm like, you play as like the most fail cop in the universe. He's so fucking embarrassing. Like Oh, that's really cool. Oh. Like, ugh. Yeah, like, Kim was so cool. I really liked how he was, like, like, he would put up with your bullshit, but he would also be like, oh my fucking god. And, like, you know, like, he wouldn't, like, make it unknown that, like, you're being fucking embarrassing. <laughs> like, he wasn't just a yes man or, like, a no, like, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like, he wasn't just... He'd be like, you know what, fuck, like, I'll entertain this one. Like, <laughs> I'll entertain this one. All right, go ahead, Harry. <laughs> like, when Harry is like, just one, just one cryptid, and Kim's like, oh, fucking fine, one cryptid. And then you ask about more cryptids, and Kim's like, hey, you said one. And Harry's like, oh, but Kim, please. And he's like, oh, fucking fine, fucking whatever. <laughs> ah, shit, we never did karaoke. Oh, well. We'll have to watch it on YouTube or something. Oh, yeah, Kim's so fucking funny. I love him a lot. It 
is it better if you <laughs> if you fail it? I um one of the first things I did is I succeeded in flirting with Class A. I thought that was interesting. Cause like one of my uh my VTuber siblings told me to do it, and I was like, okay. <laughs> oh my god, Harry, you're so fucking embarrassing. Oh cool. <laughs> Larian Studios? Oh, that's cool. I didn't know Disco Elysium was connected to Larian. Uh, no, no, nothing after that? Okay. Collage. Do I get to look at, like, pictures? What the fuck does that say? It's tiny as fuck. I can make pictures? Oh, shit. Kim, come take a picture with me, Kim. Kim, you're my best friend. Do you know that? Oh my god. Okay, anyways. <laughs> Let's read out. Ugh. Okay, we're gonna raid Chris. He's doing game demos, so I don't know what he's playing. Take a look. It looks it looks silly. It looks like you're at a stadium and you're picking what to eat. Alright. Yes, thank you. I like Prongles was like it's one more hour. I'm like, I can do one more hour. There's like two more hours. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> Alright. Thanks for showing up everybody. I do appreciate it. I will see you next time. Ta-ta! See you tomorrow.